Welcome back to the CSL 2020-2021 Grand Finals hosted by LSU. I am so excited to have you all here. Guys, we have gone through almost every single Grand Final this week. It all comes down to Valorant. That's where we are going to close it out. York University and the University of Ottawa about to go head to head. And I'm so excited to bring in our casters, Dak and I hold Shift. Shift, it is so good to work another event with you. How are you guys doing? Oh, thank you so much, Katie. Very appreciated and very happy to be here. And yeah, alongside Alan, I mean, Shift, great to have you here, man. I'm so looking forward to working with you on this awesome Grand Finals. Yeah, it's good to be here, man. I mean, we and me and Dak actually know each other from Overwatch. Me and Katie know each other from Call of Duty. So it's just one happy, <laughs> happy family meeting up in the Valorant space. Yeah, it's going to be a really fun one. Two Canadian schools wearing off for Grand Finals. Love it. Love to be here for it. So tell me a little bit about these schools and about what you expect to see in this Grand Final. Because I, I am a little bit more new to Valorant. So I would love to hear from you guys and maybe the audience as well. Kind of what we can anticipate. Absolutely. Well, both of these teams coming from the Canada East Conference. In fact, they're the number one and two teams. And I believe this will be the uh -huh. third time that they're facing off each other. They already faced off in the regular season and in the winner's finals. And now they're getting another rematch here in Grands. These two teams have barely dropped maps and are two of the best teams to come essentially out of Canada. So I'm expecting some of the best of the best in terms of gameplay. I mean, you got York, the favorite, right? I mean, you mentioned it right there, Dak. The fact of the matter is they're coming out of the winner's bracket side of things. Ottawa struggling kind of against this squad in those prior matchups. So, yeah, I think you've got a really good one on your hands. And there should be a lot of known variables between both of these teams with all those instances that they've played each other in the past. Well, I can't wait to watch. I can't wait to listen to you guys cast. So, Shift, Dak, I will let you take it away. Thanks so much, Katie. Very much appreciate it. And yeah, thank you all so much for joining us. It is Valorant Night in Canada. We are very excited to bring you the grand finals culmination of the 2020-2021 collegiate season here at CSL. Thank you for joining us. And yeah, this is going to be great. We're going into the last matchup of the playoffs bracket, and it has been one hell of a road through a long regular season starting all the way back in October. Now playoffs starting back in February. We have the two top teams, as you said, teams have already faced each other in winners, and now we have the rematch to see who's the best in grand finals. Yeah, it should be a really interesting one because, you know, I, I don't know specifically what the map set looked like at the times that they've played beforehand. Uh, but once we start getting through that pick and ban selection, you have to imagine that those are going to be pretty tailored, not just to what the teams individually prefer for themselves, but maybe even to counter up against some variables that were faced when they had played in the past. So interesting storylines, I think, that will really get narratively right from the get go. And I mean, the thing is, there are a lot of teams like I, flat out. I'll be candid. I did not know that there were this many teams that participated in the regular season 140 plus all-star teams these to the final that we're left with and the fact that they've got a history and they're also kind of battling from canada maybe a little bit of pride on the line you love to see it these little things add a little bit of extra fuel to the fire there is that upper bracket that we're talking about you know york pretty clean through kennesaw state they make it through their upper semis in three but then that map three that they had versus ottawa in the past you know, it gets them to a position to where they have the upper bracket favor when it comes to taking the picks and bans in their hand. But at the same point, this Ottawa team have also played through a bit of a gauntlet. I mean, there's really not a lot of negatives that we can say about either of these two teams. Really, the only thing that we really can say is that Ottawa's just lost to York. That's all we can really say about it. Yeah, there are definitely pros and cons for both of these teams. Obviously, University of Ottawa, they have the stamina, right? They can get knocked down and bounce right back. But of course, yeah, York University, York University on paper, I mean, they're the clear favorite. They've already defeated University of Ottawa. They've already defeated other teams pretty handily. They took out University of Houston a couple of weeks ago, which was another favorite team in this bracket. In fact, this is the team that we thought was going to make it to grand finals. So the fact they didn't even make it that far is certainly telling. And, you know, even through loser's bracket, you know, you, uh, University of Ottawa, they've defeated Carlton again in, a, in the loser's final matchup. So it was another yeah. matchup that they had won in the winner's bracket. Then they took them on again in loser's, won that again. So a team that can, can play consistently and learn and adapt too. And I think that's really going to be the story here because as we said, these teams have played each other before, so they're not going to play the same cards. They're going to try to take different routes. They're going to try to use different strategies because they know the other team knows a little bit more about them than you know, a random opponent from some other conference. So I definitely expect a little more outside of the box plays. You saw the bracket right there, a little bit of the story unfolding. But you know, throughout the regular season, we saw teams stick to what they know 
And I think now we're going to start to see, you know, aces up the sleeve start to be used because when else are you going to use them? This is it. Do or die right here in grand finals. And a lot of money on the line as well. Just a kind of funny note, I didn't even realize until I was looking at that bracket that all the top three teams are Canadian schools. Yeah. Carlton Ravens in the mix there for third. So here's what you have as far as the dispersal of prizing. Of course, we've already determined our third and fourth place at 1500 and a grand. But then we've got essentially $2,500 match worth of Valorant coming up here for this best of three. $5,000 for first, $2,500 for second. Definitely something great to be playing for here. I mean, just college students, full-time students that are just kind of getting their feet wet with competitive to Valorant. Not bad to be sitting in a position where you've already locked in two and a half grand, but playing for that $5,000, taking a cool grand home per player, that's going to feel pretty great if you can find a way to take yourselves on top of this best of three. And if you do get that first place position, you're not only going home with that five grand, you're going home with that beautiful CSL 2020-2021 championship trophy. Look at that. You're going to be hoisting that up Stanley Cup style once you get that victory. <laughs> I can't wait to see. I want to see some pictures from either team. Uh, that looks awesome. You know, from someone who's been to so many, you know, LAN, uh, you know, IRL events throughout the years, you, you sometimes get lanyards, you sometimes get medals, sometimes you don't get anything at all. But to get a whole trophy, yeah, to cool. put that, that, that's that's awesome. And you have to feel it because they're Canadian schools, they probably will hoist that thing around like it's the Stanley Cup. Maybe exactly. put some skates on to start going around the ring. No, it's really awesome. I mean, again, like this is my first real kind of deep dive into Collegiate Valorant overall and seeing the scene have so much enrichment when it comes to how many squads, the prize pool, the broadcast, everything looks so great. And it's going to be really, really exciting, I think, for these players to start digging into this one. Of course, yeah, there's so much awesome stuff happening here at CSL you're all familiar with, but we also have some new stuff, of course, a new CSL Esports Instagram. Be sure to check that out. We got updates, CSL Esports GG. That's where you go to stay up all up to date on all the latest on CSL, you know, matches, tournaments, giveaways, highlights, everything. CSL Esports GG. Go check it out on Instagram. And then beyond that, all of our valued sponsors that have also been helping us put this broadcast down. Big shout outs to HyperX and Twitch Student for helping us here with the CSL Esports Collegiate Seasons across all of the different titles. I know personally, I am a HyperX stan. Like, I love it. I I'm wearing the them right now. I got the quadcast mic going on. Like, I yes, I'm sir. feeling everything. So if you're looking for that extra boost, definitely make sure you're checking out HyperX without question. Uh, but that gets us to a point where, you know, hey. Beyond that, there's also a bunch of things going on contest-wise here, Dak. It's not just prize pools we're playing for. How about name that boost coming up as well? Well, you had the perfect segue there, my man. You got to get your chance to get some cool gear from HyperX. Well, this is how you do it. Name that boost. You hop on over to CSL's Twitter page and you enter the name that boost competition for your chance to win. Do you know your Rocket League? Do you know that boost? Well, you should be able to name it. If you do, you have a chance to win some awesome HyperX gear. How fun is that, man? It's funny. I I, I am personally, I, I love watching Rocket League, but if you ever tell me to play it, I find it successful <laughs> if I even touch the ball. Doesn't have to go the right direction. It might be an own goal, but if I hit that ball, I'm feeling pretty darn good about it. So I will not be participating in that name, that boost, because I would just be throwing out <laughs> spitballs left and right. <laughs> I love me some Rocket League. I'm definitely going to take a chance at it. And, and Rocket League has been super hyped for us on Wednesdays. We've had a full, awesome broadcast week at CSL, but it all comes down to just this. But it, it's been a long road, right? Like it's been a long season, even a long playoffs. It's taken a lot to get to where we are right now. So why don't we take a look to how we got to this point? We take a look back and we get a little bit of an idea of what it was like to take that Valorant journey through the CSL 2020-2021 season. My name is Skelly. I play for York University Valorant. Hi, my name is Jay Blade Moon. I go to University of Ottawa and I play Valorant. The player that's made the most impact on our team is definitely Denya. He grinds the game like crazy and he often carries us. Now on both sides, Denya versus Akula. Denya wins. He's looking for another and he picks up with the 3K. That is clutch if I've ever seen it. I think the player that made the most impact is Kang. Confidence out of Kang there. He did not even wince at the enemies coming towards him. He played his utility to a T, showed you what it means to be a cypher. That was such good patience by him, and I, I love it. I'm hoping that U Ottawa doesn't run an Astro Viper comp because my PC always gets 90 frames against those comps, and I won't be able to kill anyone if that's the case. In terms of agents, I guess uh, I know that we know that Danya on his jet is really strong so we've definitely prepared a couple things for him 
Winning this would mean a lot to me and my team because we won CSL CSGO back in 2019. That's gonna be and it. that's not enough. York University, you're gonna be your CSL 2019 Grand Champions. So it'd be cool to be collegiate champs across two games. Uh, yeah, so for the audience, you know, just be there. It's gonna be a great game. You know, we have two of the best teams in North America and uh, get ready for some really good Valorant. And for the opponent, you know, we're not going to lose a second time. We should, we're ready for you guys, so, you know, come at us. I hope everyone has a good time and has a lot of fun in the Grand Finals. Well, you heard it right there from the players themselves. I mean, first of all, York University, not only are they the favorites going into this one, they're looking really good in the playoffs, but they're the 2019 CSGO champions. They're literally his historic champions coming into this one. Sure, it's a different game, but champions breed champions. You don't, you know, you don't just unlearn that, right? And certainly they brought <laughs> what they learned from that previous championship from Atlantic City all the way here to LSU Online. And now we're going to see what they have here in Grand Finals. See, I, I, I would like to say that I've unlearned things as I get older, so that way I don't have to feel like I'm just aged and I'm just becoming yeah. slower, both reaction-wise and physically. So I'll say I've also unlearned some things, but <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. It, it's just the end of the day. We've seen this occur across all levels of Valorant so far. Yes, there's been a conglomeration of a ton of different backgrounds for a lot of players that are kind of adapting into Valorant over the course of the last year. But let's be honest, Counter-Strike players have had the edge <laughs> when it comes down to it over all 100 Thieves have definitely showcased that across a many different other pro players so i think you're absolutely right that there is something to be said about that mechanical aim that will likely just essentially be a one-for-one -one exchange going from counter-strike to valorant but of course with all that chemistry combination when it comes to abilities and utility obviously so important i don't need to say that you guys have been playing the game for a year you all know that by now but this york team i think is so so important because they've come through we've already sold the storyline a number of times They've already beaten this Ottawa team a couple of different times before. That has to just absolutely fuel confidence going into this grand finals. Yes, it is just only one best of three. There is no bracket reset. There's no map advantage. You're just getting the veto picks advantage. But you shouldn't really be looking at that as like, a oh, our backstrap against the wall here. You've beaten this Ottawa team a couple of different times. You know them in and out, maybe outside of the Reyna and whatever combination so your frames stay healthy. There's really not <laughs> a lot that you should really be worried about here, I feel like, if you're York. Yeah, I mean, unless University of Ottawa's got that big lag switch button just right under <laughs> their, their desk, ready to go. But, you know, coming into this, they have that underdog factor, too. And we're going to get a quick look at those rosters and we continue to chat sure. about it. But, you know, that, coming in for University of Ottawa, for sure, right? Like, how many fighting games have I played where there's a huge under, underdog boost, right? Like, sometimes you go into a match and you know how much is on the line. You know how much people are expecting the other team to win. And that fuels you to play mm -hmm. even better. So I'm, I, I'm actually expecting the same kind of fire from University of Ottawa, of course. Here are their season records. They were both in the same conference. I'm pretty sure one of the two losses for University of Ottawa came from York University, but I'm not entirely sure. But these were the two top teams in the same conference. For them to come from the same region, the same conference, and then to meet again in Grand Finals speaks volumes about these two rosters. And of course, we know both rosters are extremely experienced. I think it said it's volumes about the division they played in as well. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine being in the other teams? <laughs> it's like, wait a second. <laughs> and Carlton, too. Overall. So even like yeah, Carlton, Carlton losers, yeah. <laughs> Canada is just different, man. It <laughs> must be something in the water up there. But York University, 9-1. and one. Here is that roster. You heard Skelly talking about Denya. Yeah, I, I think that we're going to be really looking at him in specific just to see what they want to bring to the table. Because, you know, we're not getting as far as, like, you know, a lot of information off of which agents in specific they may have been able to get playtime on. But on the lineup, it is listed that Denya will likely be playing their jet throughout a number of the maps, no matter what they happen to be. So if that operator pressure gets on board, we saw those highlight clips of all the blade storms looking great. That has to be, I think, one of the players you look at first and foremost, if you're York to say, all right, bud, go pop off. But on the other side, Ferrado, you got to make sure you try to hold him back a little bit to make sure he doesn't take over a game. And the roster to do that will be Blade, Cole, Kang, and then Jeremy and Electation. Oh, my goodness. Electation. I almost just flipped on his words for a while. But <laughs> that's interesting. I think if you look at Elicitations, he's going to be one of those players that you're looking at to kind of run one of those other duelists on the other side. Needing to see him, I think, kind of come to bat and maybe try to put some extra pressure onto that York uh, University squad. Yeah, Elicitations. That's an SAT word right there. I forget really to keep that, right? I, I don't even know if I would be able to spell that. But 
Yeah, you, you definitely hit the nail right in the head there. And I'm expecting, you know, teams to stay mostly consistent on what they've ran previous weeks. We talked about that earlier in the pre-show, or the pre-pre-show, I would say. But you're right, like, uh, that Jet, certainly going to be something you have to worry about. Uh, Lady, also a player that's been popping off in their matches as well. So definitely expecting a high performance from them. And oh, look at that. Look at those graphics. Love to see it. I'm definitely loving the revamp production for this. Getting a quick look at the rosters. These are the faces behind the mice and keyboards. And this is gonna, I'm really excited for this match because both these teams have proven that they can go the distance and, and play it. And that's the thing too, is that these teams haven't necessarily been in 2-0 stomps every time, right? Like they've sure. yeah, map been three. pushed to map three, right? Like yeah. York University especially has been pushed to map three multiple times. So even by University of Ottawa, it's not like they got stomped in winner's finals. They brought them to a third map. So this is a team that can roll with the punches, but isn't invincible. And I think University of Ottawa knows that. They got to find those pressure points and not really, you know, be light on the gas at the beginning, right? They got to pedal to the metal, find that weakness and really exploit it because York University is going to eventually figure that out and get back into the game somehow. Yeah, I, I say a lot when it comes down to, let's just frame it as it is maybe an underdog story. If you're looking at the team that has been beaten before, you're playing up against an opponent who's gotten the best of you, the last thing you want to do is come out at an economical disadvantage. If you can come out, win the pistol, and then win the anti-eco right afterwards, try to get some of that economy really running for you. Any moment that you can find yourself in a full gun round, a full buy round, you're going to be feeling extra, extra confident. And that early confidence could be what has largely kept maybe Ottawa from finding victories before versus this York team. Because if you're seeing pop-off Bladestorm plays coming out of the jet every single time they've got that ultimate online, the operators earned early, it can be difficult to battle up against that. I mean, very often, even at the pro scene, that operator was a problem until people started to figure out which pieces of utility do we need to use to push an operator player back into a corner to where they don't have the freedom and safety just to peak an aggressive angle. That, I think, will be very, very important. And it all starts from getting that economical advantage from the get-go. Absolutely. And we're going to be going to, hopefully... A, you know, going into the lobby pretty soon. Uh, you're right. I think the compositions is totally going to be, you know, a major factor here. And of course, coming into this, you know, thinking, are we going to see a little bit of, you know, Icebox maybe? Are we going to see Viper potentially move uh, in? Yeah, is true. is Yoro yeah. or Astro going to be used? Uh, those are the things where in the regular season, you might not see them because the team just want to play with what they know. But in the playoffs, when you got to get any kind of advantage, any kind of edge you could possibly get, that's, you know, a character you might want to, you know, pull out. Indeed the case. We'll take a look over these maps, though, as we're getting ready to go for this best of three in specific. Uh, and we talked about the fact that Comfort Picks has largely been running throughout this entirety of the league, which makes sense to a point. But, I mean, we're seeing a lot of recent adaptations at the pro level when it comes to some of the maps that we very well could see. I think Viper yeah. in specific has been the biggest conversation point. The recent changes to how her wall functions to, towards not just the extent that it really divides, but also beyond that, the health pool that it immediately takes away, that 50 health that you lose just by passing through it is yeah. massive. That's your entire shield's gone. Plus, she's got a snake fight that can make you vulnerable. That's so important. And we're seeing a lot of teams really being able to utilize that to cancel out armor and get a health advantage just from using things like a toxic screen or a poison cloud. So it'll be really interesting to see if these teams have had a chance to kind of practice that. But it also beyond that just depends on whatever maps we get today and we are getting a look at that of course going into this york's advantage because they came from winner's bracket uh they are the ones who get to decide the start of the bands and they let university of ottawa get that first band which was ascent which uh, to me is very surprising because throughout the weeks ascent bind and then split were usually the three most picked maps icebox that's a ban i'm not surprised by yeah. whatsoever icebox is almost always banned but ascent very surprising ascent is very often map one or two in these sets even though it's a pretty large map, it's a map that everyone's very comfortable on. A lot of room to just slow down and reset things. So surprise there. But Bind is going to be Ooh. our first map there, our first map pick. Thoughts on that, Alan? We haven't seen a lot of Bind being played at the top echelon. I think over the course of what we just had in Challengers Finals for North America, has only played like four or five times overall. And the thing about this is it does kind of reduce the impact that Jet has. So it'll be really interesting to see what we're going to get from those main duelists. Will we just be seeing things like Reyna and Phoenix matched up with a Rays who very regularly is always played on Vine? So it's a very interesting first map pick. Might be something in strategy as far as trying to eliminate the ability for that operator to be prevalent all the time. Not mm -hmm. to sit there and say it's not common because you've got players like Wardell who play in North America. He will put on an operator whenever he gets a chance to, but that is a very interesting opening map pick and maybe even leads to the conversation about the Viper or Sage coming into the mix because we've seen both them start to find some recent favor uh, over the last couple of weeks. 
And there is our second map pick there, Haven. And that's going to be the York University map pick. So uh, University of Iowa going to be starting our defense first. Uh, Haven is an interesting one because that's the map that teams most often try to avoid. It's such a volatile map trying to, you know, especially on defense, hold it, or even attacking three bases at once, you know, or, sure. you know, interchangeably. It's something that volatility is just teams usually just try to avoid that, right? So coming into it as a map that it's not just a, you know, it's it's guaranteed, right? It's not even a decision maker, it's a guaranteed map. That's a map where it could completely change the tone and the pace of the set of, of the set entirely. And then split, of course, is gonna be our tiebreaker map. You mentioned Sage, that's certainly a character and agent that I'm expecting likely sure. get some usage there. Uh, Viper, of course, has been, that's kind of like a niche pick, became a very common pick for that character, for that agent. Uh, so I would say overall bind and split pretty frequently picked, but the Haven, I was, I'm surprised it's, uh, you know, Haven and not a son. And I'm really interested, I think, just kind of from a macro point of view, what are going to be the smoke agents that are going to be used here? Because mm -hmm. Astra at the top level has taken over Omen pretty much full handedly, I mean, flat out, especially when it comes to a map like Haven, the ability to use gravity wells and use that cosmic to find to split up an already stretched out map is massive from both POVs. You could use that defensively as well as you can find it success with it on the attack. So I'm really interested to see because you had mentioned that, hey, a lot of these teams and a lot of these players just kind of going with what they know. Is there good rehearsal and practice with the Astra? Because mm -hmm. in combination of whatever Sentinel you want to pick, there is some major lockdown opportunities to where you can trust that Sentinel defensively just to lock down the one offsite, whether that's CU or whether that's over towards A, throw some stars down, have the ability to use Nova pulses or gravity wells, and it makes life so much easier for that solo defender. But at the end of the day, if you don't have that coordinate, communi oh, communication and coordination, <laughs> trying to combine both words into one, that can be detrimental because if you don't have that ability to kind of use that uh, utility across the board from the other site, it could leave your one man a little bit off guard. So I'll be interested to see what the agent compositions look like as we get in just from kind of a meta standpoint. No, definitely. You hit the nail right in the head there. Astra has definitely been more in vogue. I think a lot of teams just try to go for the omen a lot of the time because it's a simple rush in paranoia and smoke what you have, right? I think they try to that's, keep it yeah, simple in that way. Um, but I would love to see the Astra come in because that's like the wrench that you kind of have to throw into the system. And in the pro play, a lot of teams are having issues dealing with Astra on certain sites. It just completely shuts down an entire site with the gravity well uh, on its own. And then just the rest of the kit completely makes it overwhelming for even multiple agents to hit an entire site. Omen doesn't have that same value on defense, but I feel it can be a little more flexible on offense. So we'll see if that might be a, you know, a factor here. I don't expect any Yoru at all. I haven't seen <laughs> no. any. Um, Yoru maybe is still I'm really... <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm buying. I, you know, uh, that's really like the one place we might even see Yoru. And then I've seen like Yoru played on Breeze, which is not legal. But, uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's an agent that is still very, very, very uh, in development. But Viper, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, you talked about Viper. It's a character, an agent that you can no longer push for free, right? Like it's immediately yeah. a check and you have to respect it and and it's I, you have to respect it like flat out too it's very little you can avoid uh but for buying a character you you know you almost never see so we'll see interesting uh to kind of look over what we have denya is going to put himself onto the jet so the conversation of forcing the jet into maybe forcing the operator is going to be alive and i'm not trying to sit there and say that it's antiquated by any stretch of the imagination but it is something that is a little bit less common lately uh, so we'll definitely see how Denya finds success with this character. Oh. Is it just an individual frag fest or what? Uh, and then the other side, we are getting a full lock-in. The Astra is in the mix and the more there traditional double duelist of the Phoenix and the Rays. So I'll be interested to see how Jeremy handles this Astra. I mean, again, you mentioned that the you know comfortability that these players have showcased throughout the season has been prevalent. So will there be that same level of confidence on a more recent character at this time? No, this is, I mean, first of all, great call on your end. But yeah, this is exactly what you need to see from these teams, right? Because the Astra is York University prepared for that. That's something that just straight flat out University of Ottawa might be relying on. And then the fact that, yeah, Astra looks, works really well as, you know, just uh, entirely for smoking, but also in the retake and post plant situations too. A lot of good utility from Astra that Omen can't always provide. So we'll see. Uh, York University, I mean, this is a competition I feel like we've seen on Bind since the beginning of time. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah, definitely the case. So let's see how things unfold for them as they get into this pistol round.
And well, at least for how the defense is setting up, this is pretty traditional overall. You do have a deep camera playing into hookah, so there's really no need to check that. So a lot of the focus for what it comes down to where Denya and Skelly want to play around B should likely be mostly leaning towards the long side. We'll just kind of see what happens because you already have elicitations working their way up with two compadres to get into hookah. So there's the early gravity well. Skelly will actually be pulled into that a little bit, so that'll make things a bit interesting, but the camera is already in such a great spot. Denny is already spamming, and it's already good for a first blood. And beyond that, also the play from behind Stig's so good through the teleporter for the following two. Wow, that would, did not see that coming at all. A great smoke put down by the Omen on defense, Kin. And then that just opened up short. They knew that there was no push coming in towards A, and they got the pinch maneuver right in through teleporter. Interested to see how things kind of go from here. Stig able to find a third. Blade does respond. Spike will go down, but Blade will cover that no problem. Uh, he's got plenty of time to work with here, but not a lot of information on what's over towards A. So you know for a fact that the Jet and the Sova are likely over towards the B site. It just comes down to will you read how exactly KXN is trying to play this over towards the A site defensively. And Bladey now might run into this interaction. That's how it showers. Is going to check lamps first. Nope. Decides against that. Going to go on to site. The Omen's still waiting for the shower peak here. This one on three situation. No point in committing. Wait it out. You can even wait for the spike to go down, but it might go for a spawn rotation here, which is only going to bring some attention from both showers and the other side. Here comes the paranoia. Blady. Very little time left on their lifespan, and they're likely going to find ends meet. 21 HP, but KXN gets the kill. Yeah, that's really tough. It's actually a really nice curveball coming out from Blade just to try to stay alive and delay the inevitable, but unfortunately just wasn't able to connect the second right click off the classic. So Pistol will go the way of York. Good start for them there defensively. And I think the question is just going to be, again, that economic advantage is so important, it feels like, across all levels of Valorant, especially if you can find a way to get an early operator. That will not be in the conversation for round three because you are getting essentially a full purchase coming through in this anti-eco. Four Spectres and a Phantom uh, on board with Stig, so there will not be at least an initial save to get that defensive operator online early. No, absolutely. And now you can see the offense completely spread out here rather than that 3 2 position that they first started out in the first round. Going for that information gathering, they knew the defense got so much more de uh, information just by pushing up a short. So instead, the attack is playing slowly to try and bait that out a little bit. But the defense not having any of it, they get a little bit of information, but no depth. Stig, if they want to, <laughs> wishes they got those paint shells back. But uh, we see now the attack going to coalesce four agents all in showers here. Jeremy will be the first one to fall. Lineup opportunity for Stig. Finds the first. Blast pack around the corner. Denya trying to push on in. And oh my goodness, the confidence from Denya. All right, now we're seeing why Skelly had so many kind words to say about him in that opening because that was bold and brazen. Still walks with a couple of kills and largely successful through and through for the side of York University. There will be some considerations economically coming into this next round as only three members survived. Well, that's why they put him on store. My man was flying right through showers. That was just so hard to push up against. And and I'm, I'm surprised that there were so many agents stacked in through showers after all that utility was used. A great opportunity just to push back. I really think the attack had a good idea. You know, University of Ottawa just playing slowly. But after you played slow and that utility is used, don't give the defense the opportunity to just squish you into one area and pinch on you. Stig is playing a little bit further up into hookah than he has in the previous rounds. He's going to be pushed back. That does force out a lot of utility, but Hookah has now been taken by University of Ottawa. Only player who's going to be sticking there, though, will be Elicitation. So not much consideration, just essentially a trade for utility and a full reset coming out of Ottawa as they look to track back over to the middle of the map. And York just playing this perfectly, not even moving. They're not getting baited by this fake rotation. They've kept all of their defenders exactly where they are. And so now the retry on B is exactly, essentially going into the exact same situation we saw at the beginning of the round. Timing is going to be everything here with this smoke. Ah, and that'll be a good one for Stig. The trade is there. Run it back has been earned. That'll be pulled out by Blade. Moving his way quickly forward. Recon Bolt also trying to delay any inevitable push that's coming through with so much reveal. Even the shock dart getting into mix, but Tenel's not going to find much with that. So has to wait for help now as they move through just a ghost in hand. And that's that anti-eco problem of only having three members that survived. Jeremy able to watch the first entrance, not going to get the second. It all comes down to KXN. Cybercage providing a bit of a wall as Kang will use that to find the easy angle. And we will get a first round of the board for University of Ottawa. 
Not a bad second try on the site. You mentioned that really aggressive hookah position there by the raise, and even though Stig did get that initial kill, not having the raise for the retake was certainly something they would like to have back. A really solid play for the attack to hold that site afterward, and then of course the neural theft just, you know, icing on the cake right there to make sure you get that round, and that was a crucial round for you yeah, really to was. get, so you kind of needed to use that neural theft, but now coming into this one, Stig has the showstopper ready to go, Sor will have, or Denya will have Blade Storm, so they have a lot, and there goes the pop too, so they've got a lot to use in this fourth round. Felicitation still trying to play aggressively, Stig holding the corner very nicely, finds the first ball. The paint shells will pull back any offensive members. And that means that the timing will have to be good with this hit coming from B long. Hear them making a call and try to play off of this ultimate orb. It will be earned, but it's interesting just to see the early blade storm come through as well in a round that you can't actually afford. So then you're looking to establish some dominance here early and we're stuck with a 3v4 situation where University of Ottawa do have an edge, <gasps> but then you sees the back of blade. This has absolutely blow up potential. There's the first, wants the second no blade, able to turn it aside and we go 3v3. Still not a bad trade whatsoever. And remember Kang is also super low after that last tag. So of course going down there was certainly crucial. Now a three on three situation, Cold gets the better of Tennis, who try, or Tennels, I'm sorry, who tries to get in there in time. Spike will go down a three on two situation, but two of the three remaining members of the attack are super low HP. This post plant does have that Aldrin to scout things out, but you mentioned the health pools. That would become a huge consideration. Skelly though, not gonna get the angle. Cole holding it down tight, finds the headshot and things become tied at two. And this is why I kind of question the ability of using that uh, Blade Storm so early because yeah, you've got 6K if you're Denya right now, but your teammates are broke. I mean, they really can't do anything. This would have been the round that you would have wanted to use that Blade Storm just to find some kill potential, but Can instead it's gonna have to be into the Phantom uh, instead of just going pistols with a Blade Storm. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, there might be, you know, the showstopper for Stig, but Cole also has the Hunter's Fury, which is I would assume would probably come into play here. Jeremy will also have their ultimate ready to go after one kill. So and this is an opportunity for the attack to play aggressively here after they've gotten the information they need and push in, maybe even try to bait that showstopper out trying to use a fake rotation. Denya, though, finds a licitation just hanging out there in market and punishes them for it. You're trying to tell me that your solo hero AR is going to dry wide peak outside of hookah. <laughs> this guy's got brass stones the size of, I don't even know what bowling balls. That is unbelievable. What's a huge win to start things off. The problem will be this weapon is not in a collectible space, so it really doesn't do too much to allow the defense to get an extra weapon, but at least they've got the numbers, which is not bad at all. You can see Kang now here trying to get a little bit of a feel for A, which hasn't been pushed at all. There's that Hunter's Fury. Cole using that to try and break things up here towards A short. Kang meanwhile finds Denya as Stig goes down as well, and that's completely opened up B site. No one is there. The entirety of the defense is now on A site, thanks to Kang's pressure through showers. And that's just a peek that comes through in response to what I was just mentioning. They wanted to play for that rifle. They got aggressive through mid, trying to see if they could collect it for free, getting punished. Now it's gonna be a post plant 4v3 in favor of Ottawa. Should be a situation that they win, but we'll see how things unfold. Jeremy is gonna consider a couple extra star placements. And well, the retake is quick and the gravity well will be right on top of where the spike was planted. Tent's gonna find one KXN, another. So numbers are starting to even up. If Skelly can find one more, it'd be great. But as they walk into the dark cover, they find their maker be met as that will be the third round in a row for Ottawa. And there is that Astra difference there, right? Like really slowing down the retake a little bit for sure. And, and making it difficult to hold multiple angles, especially in that retake position. That was a really solid play. Nice to have that a little extra utility there. That's that Astro difference that we were talking about that yeah. might not have been possible with just having the Omen, right? Like a paranoia was not gonna stop them. And and of course, you know, I also had like Kang who got timinged really poorly there and Hookah, unfortunately. So fortunately, it's a lot of coincidences and solid play for the defense, I'm sorry, for the attackers against the defense to get them that first lead of the round. And now you've got the first operator as well being pulled out here. Denya does actually have to use the Tailwind to get away, so there's no escape here outside of Cloudburst. Have to spend both of those. There is good help coming through from Tannels, but it just feels a little bit unfortunate that you had to use the, the Tailwind just to get away from the Gravity Well in the first place. Bold Peak coming through for 10. He will drop. And now it really just falls on the shoulders of Denya to find one more pick, pending that this Execute still comes through, which it will not. The Spike will rotate back to bit. 
Yeah, uh, Jeremy just picking that up. They left the back in market, so it looks like they were always intending to do this kind of like push, try to get a pick, try to get some info, and then back up style, which they're now implementing as you still have Kang hanging out in showers, waiting for the rest of the team to mosey their way on over towards a short. Only one defender here on a site. It is Skelly, and they're sitting in their cameras too. So they're looking out, they're waiting to see if anyone peeks out. And now they have a little bit of a rotation of KXN who's going to cover that gap there over towards heaven, decides against it to go back. I, I'm, I'm assuming that they're, you know, trying to just wait for this rotation. That the fake is not happening. They're not getting baited. Run it back will be the execute here. There goes the trap wire. Blade should be using this run it back, and he will. So he's going to be the first player to clear. Simultaneously, the push is coming through mid. Opening oh. engagement, good for Blade, but Skelly simultaneously didn't just find one. He found a second and has earned the neural theft. That'll be used immediately. Spike has been collected, but a lot of work to be done with not a lot of time to do it. Ten seconds on oh. the clock. Showstopper coming out, but Kang actually does get the spike planted. 1v3, ah, just guesses the wrong way as far as where the retake was coming from. So Skelly with three in the round and Neural Theft earned to assist. will tie us up at three rounds apiece. And that's how you do it. Gets that spike diffused. The Showstopper was burned, but Stig had been kind of holding that for a few rounds there, but they did get blinded. And unfortunately, Kang just looking the wrong place, wrong time at the end of that set. But, uh, you know, a lot of things opened up by some really solid shower play there by Kang to really get onto the site. But once you have Denya just holding down things with the op, when you have Stig with the showstopper, it's almost too much to deal with on the attack. And as you said, they had very little time to work with. That became the sixth man for the defense. And you don't have a lot of time with that kind of pressure. So now it's a three on three situation, but the money is not looking great for either of these two teams. No, not really. I mean, it is going to be another full pie as far as the weapons are concerned, but not when it comes to armor and utility. That will be a certainty. And you're seeing it come through here as elicitations once more tasked to clear hookah. It does so successfully, but at a small cost. Boom bot and paint shells have been spent. You also have to keep in mind that there is a showstopper on board for them. And the Al drone coming forward very well could be the go call coming into the mix. And there's the showstopper makes its way onto site. Well, the stations comes up completely empty. The defense holding very strongly. Four for one exchange. Last player is Cole. Nowhere for him to go but down. That'll be another beautiful round coming through for York's defense. That, I mean, that round almost speaks for itself. The entirety of defense, all holding angles perfectly. They had the entirety of the site completely covered off from almost every perspective. I, that, you know, that's textbook right there play. And that's probably what got York this far in the bracket. Oh, for sure. I, it's just, that's a really good concentrated defense. And it all starts, I think, just looking at what Stig was able to do from the teleporter with the boom bot and the paint shells behind that. You saw who could get stalled just a touch. And as the execute was coming out, Skelly had the perfect setup for it. So once more, Skelly's been a bit of a problem so far. He's six and four with two assists. He's been clutched in a couple of different moments, including the big gun round from a couple of rounds ago as he played that through showers. And it's been very forward placement for a lot of this utility. We'll see if that does eventually change. Opening shock dart actually very well placed from Tennels, which will actually push back the one player trying to play for an ultimate orb. And now Ottawa will have to reconsider what exactly they want to do, especially as they lose Blade playing aggressively through shower. Very smart by York to just change up their defensive positioning. They move the Cypher over to B and lock that down with tripwires. And then they have Denya covering A still with that op. So now that the, you know, the attackers thought they had a little more room to work with because there are no tripwires on A, there's still an operator waiting for you. Yeah. So they did lose one body, but under that minute mark, they got to slowly rotate back over towards B against the more heavily fortified site, which is now being droned out. So now they know there's a push coming through Hookah. Yeah, and you've got Stig on the flank as well. They know that this is 100% a B play just because he cleared so much space through showers. Tennels, the weapon advantage, no problem there. Last one left alive is King. Does find one elimination, beautifully found to be fair, but there is no AR to be picked up in front of him. Just has to trust the pistol, and as he runs out of ammunition, he'll also run out of his life. And that'll be enough for now a couple of rounds in a row coming through for the side of York. That'll be now three actually in a row for a 5-3 advantage. And the tale of the tape so far has been really the, the information game. I mean, ha half the battle is getting the necessary information. And so much was learned off that initial engagement and how much, you know, hesitation was had at short once the attackers saw that those tripwires were in the way, right? And then, of course, Denya got that initial pick. Once that kill went through, you know that the attackers are going to rotate towards B, right in towards those tripwires again. And that's just perfect conditioning there coming out from New York University. You are divided. Okay, this is going to be an early execute, it looks like. You saw the gravity well be placed on the other side of this cosmic divide. KXM, that's a good paranoia, but not going to challenge it. It will slow down the hit just a touch. 
And you can even see number four is going to be Sig. The Ray is coming through. Actually, Blast Packs over the top of the trap wire. This flank is going to be 100% open once he gets here. Tennel's trying to keep things interesting. The Hunter's Fury not going to find anything with it. But this take from Ottawa is maybe a little bit too slow because now here comes that flank from behind. Sig will reveal their position with the Boom Bot. But everybody from Ottawa is just stuck in lamps at the moment. Yeah, I was going to say, they completely left. Oh, Blade, though, gets Stig. That was huge. Now that gives them a way out, potentially. And there goes the run it back. Blade, he gets caught immediately. He knows where that op is. Doesn't get a second guess. And Denny gets another one. Jerry picked it up for the trade, but now it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Oh, my goodness. If he hits that Blaze Wall connection, I lose my lead. <laughs> it was, was close. <laughs> I, I, that was a clencher right there. It almost had me. Well, the 1v1 will come through. Objective advantage in favor of Blade, but Denya has swapped off the operator in favor of a Phantom that he collected off the ground. So it's Vandal v. Phantom, 150 HP v. 100, and the patience from Denya might be rewarded for it, and boy is he. Three kills in the round, huge from the operator to hold off the initial hit towards A, and then the recovery of the 1v1. We'll see now York go up 6-3. to three. Whew, wow. The I mean, defense in the hot seat right there, but Denya with the nerves of steel Here. and blood as cold as ice right there. Just right in that 1v1, having very, very strong hands. And that's another round. That's four unanswered rounds for the defense. So economically, they are looking good. They've got full buys on rifles, armor, op. They have a bunch of credits to work at for full buys after this. Meanwhile, it's a necessary eco round. It's a necessary potential thrifty here for University of Ottawa. Yeah, it's not the worst weaponry to be playing with. If you're Ottawa, you've got a Bulldog, you've got a Spectre, and the potential for some one-taps to come through, but you need to isolate and find an opening kill as oh, well. I, a kill on the opposing team is largely what I mean. <laughs> a little bit of self-friendly fire coming off the paint shells. KXN having a little bit of trouble with elicitations, who does punish. So there is an opportunity for this offense to actually get on the site, but Skelly responds to one, looking for more than that. Stig there for these trades are these are these are fine trades. This is just a half five for Ottawa. So you're in a two v two. Spike could be planted, and this is still a winnable round. True, but Cole super low HP, and just with that sheriff, really can't peek very much. <laughs> Denya takes Jeremy's scalp off right there, and, and Cole that cannot repeek that. There's absolutely nothing you can do. Has to go back and runs over to B-Site, so at, at least some opportunity to get a little bit extra credit, which is certainly necessary for University of Ottawa. Cole has only a 1,600 credits right now, so spike needs that planted. spike money, needs those 300 extra, but location is revealed. This retake is almost completely guaranteed. Cole gets a couple shots in, tags, but it's not enough against Denya, who is just the Thanos of this universe right now. They snap their fingers and players go down. Deck, he dinked them through the container with that yeah. sheriff shot. Yeah. That feels so bad because you've got the recon bolt coming up. You have a shock dart. And you have a hunter's fury that was earned. That was very winnable with a specter in hand. So you take a look back at the replay. This shot from Denya, by the way, that's just a huge awareness because the setup that you're seeing for Jeremy and Cole is we both have sheriffs. Let's just double peak heaven and just try to get a team shot in. Maybe we can isolate a pick like that, but will be denied a beautiful shot from Denya, but you still have to go back to the end of the round. Almost an opportunity to clutch things up from Cole. Just unfortunate that that dink that happens to the Sheriff is technically through part of the environment to stall it from being a one tap. Oh, absolutely right there. And now we have a little bit of action. All in hookah. I mean, it's a party in here. And Stig is the first one uninvited. As Jeremy gets a 2K, finds Denya. Denya going down early. That's huge. No jet factor, no op factor there. Then Tennels, though, in position to get two. Can't get the third as Elicitation shuts them down. But now it's a two on two situation. You gotta clear your corners if you've got a numbers advantage like that. You've dealt with what has historically been two of the prevalent forward defenders over towards this B site. You just have to know that there's gonna be one more player sitting in the back of site somewhere. Paranoia is gonna come through. Skelly gonna use that to retake. Cole, nowhere for him to go, and everything has gone wrong. This would be a 3v5 situation, but wait. Blade keeping things interesting, but only for a time. The nerf that was being spent, but Skelly didn't even need it. Locks down the headshot, and now we've got a situation where it's been six rounds in a row for York with one more to play in the half. That corner position, that corner pocket, I think generated four of those five kills. You're absolutely right. You gotta check your corners and you gotta keep checking your corners even after the action starts. Here. And that was just a huge, huge win. 
Uh, and especially after losing Denya and Stig so early, that was coming from a 3v5 situation. And then Skelly yeah. <laughs> just completely changing it. That's six unanswered rounds coming into the last one of this half. Okay. And this is not going to be a comfortable round in any form for Ottawa. You've got a Guardian, a couple of ARs behind that. Only two players with full armor. You have to imagine that the economy has also hurt the abilities they can bring into the mix. So you need to find value off the Showstopper, the Cosmic Divide, and the Hunter's Fury. Defensively, Hunter's Fury will come out first. Little Station's just throwing out the Showstopper blindly to Elbow, finds nothing. And that's actually a massive pickup with Tennels finding that opening pill. That's going to be no more Hunter's Fury from the side of Cole or Ottawa. Oh, all right. Spike goes down. Elicitation's waiting for the push out spawn. You can see yeah, the paranoia is ready to go. They don't immediately pick off of it. Elicitation's still ready and finds that omen. Gets the oh, gets that kill stolen, but finds Denya. And now a three on four situation. Stig does get it. Another one oh. trying to blast pack their way out, but gets cut off at the knees. It's a scramble. It's a mess but it will be a necessary round there for University of Ottawa. Yeah, it's just so many things go back and forth in the chaos of what just unfolded with that hookah push through. Uh, first and foremost, the Hunter's Fury defensively was actually really well timed and it does find the Sova counterpart. So there was not a chance for Cole to respond of one of their own, but Elicitations also kind of goes a bit wide with the Showstopper. And you might be thinking, oh, it's a Rosa ult because he misses it completely. But <laughs> You know for a fact no one's an elbow. And that was a key position yeah. for the offense in the end to kind of hold as a post point was starting to come through. It essentially meant that the force for the retake would have had to been from the front, which you saw happen. And beyond that, you saw the good eliminations coming through for Ottawa. So not bad to recover. 4-8, obviously not ideal, but you win this pistol, you're right back in this game. Now, this is definitely doable, 100%. And elicitations, like walking right in. KXN, though, finds Blady. Blade and, and Jeremy will get the trade, but uh, that's a very aggressive defense there. Now opens up the B site for the rotation over, which is being held only solely here by Kang, who takes Denya right out at Huga. Cold headshot coming through for Kang, but Stig will respond and respond cleanly. 3v3 situation, Spike will be planted without contest. And you've got, you have to wait six seconds. You need to get this recon bolt before you make a move here defensively. You just can't force your way through good clearance of some space. But now that recon bolt has to come out. And as it does, Stig on the pinch finds them one. And oh boy, you are back onto the site, but you've got to respond to these players coming through over to an elbow. Stig will find the third, just down to Jeremy. Does get tagged up a touch by the paint shells. Shock bolt also coming in. Not going to find much connection there. And interestingly enough, there should be a free kill, but the right click just catches more wall than it does player. And as Stig locks down the elimination, they will walk away with four straight kills and working very early, very early. Showstopper potentially five out of seven. Y'all couldn't see my face, but I had a stank face on for those shots from Stig. Stig was just planting them left and right. Some <laughs> really solid shots there. And yeah, that pistol round, you mentioned it, you know, they, you don't necessarily win or lose on those, but in that kind of situation, you almost do because that's now momentum for York to start to really snowball here, right? They win this next round and they're only a couple rounds from winning the entire thing. So, yeah. or at least the first map. So, and this is now, you really can't hesitate. And on defense, you gotta be careful while taking these aggressive positions. You don't wanna be losing some of your top braggers so early in the round, but Kang so far so good staying alive against this fighting market. They're looking to maybe isolate the lurking play of Skelly, which oh. is not a terrible idea, but this is going to give up the entirety of they the just B site. Traded. They yeah. just gave it up. I mean, you see it. They're just they're playing for the isolation on the Skelly. They do find yeah. it. So it's a weapon in their back pocket, but look at the post plant defense. Already set up very aggressively. Stig avoiding the majority of a curveball. Paint shells in response. We'll back up this play, finding one elimination. But from behind, oh, not gonna wow. happen. The elicitations was in a cheeky spot. Maybe a chance to work their way around, but not the case. And that's not a great situation for the defending side. You give up the round, which is fine. But honestly, if you're gonna play that far aggressive, it's one of those things <laughs> that you just take the weapon and run maybe at a certain point. Cause giving away the plant is gonna make this round very difficult to come back into. Even you're even seeing zeroed out economies coming through for four out of the five players for Ottawa defensively. I, I thought I was watching some StarCraft 2 there for a second. I haven't seen a base trade like that in years. <laughs> that was wild, but you got to have your own base to trade, man. You can't be just running out into the wild. Uh, and that was, I, honestly, though, shout outs to Stig. A Stig just moseying around that shot dart in the corner like it was nothing. And then getting those well-placed shots, making it look easy. That was, I love seeing that kind of play. Stig has the showstopper ready already. 
three rounds into this half, already has that ult ready to go. Could be the fringe for an execution. Just double blast pack on on top of the truck and just free fire it. Could be cause for something to go. And well, wouldn't there you it call is. it? There it is. I'll send the script to you later here, Dak. First blood <laughs> will be confirmed, but it is traded. And that's an even pinstripe kill feed. So we stay 3v3. The spike has gotten its way though onto A and there will be a post plant setup coming out for York. And that post plant is gonna rotate mostly towards lamps here to try and cover both A short and then give themselves some coverage from the inevitable push from spawn. And they do get it. Elicitation's now gonna move right in. Doesn't have too much utility to work with. Gets paranoid, but lands the shots on Skelly. That being said, KX then gets the two piece to make it a two on one situation. And now the retake a lot harder to work with here as Blade has the wall to try and give themselves, you know, less options, less angles, but they flash themselves and then swing a little bit messily there into the corner, giving KXN their third kill of the round and the third round here for York in the second half. Yeah, in, I don't know. This is one of those tricky situations where you don't, I mean, if you force buy here, if you're Ottawa, you're not looking at a good economy. You're not looking at a lot to work with, but if you want to win the map, I think you have to force here. And it looks like we are seeing that come through. Judge has been purchased, a couple of specters in the mix. Elicitations will also meet on this judge. So where do you want to play this, Ottawa? I would suggest holding somewhere close off the teleporter if you're playing over by eight, or especially stacking over through hookah. But the problem is the hit's coming quicker than they'd like. And it's already found some success. Denya with the opening has allowed York to get onto the A site. Oh. All right, doesn't get stopped by that. Kang's gonna still hang out here with the judge, just outside of the range of that shock dart. Denya gonna get the Not full bad. brunt of that shotgun. Yeah, that's gonna be big. But Stig, meanwhile, is just taking out the rest of the team. The shock dart might almost take out Stig. Elicitations, though, we'll get him with the boom bot, but KXN trades again. Three on one situation, and Cole is, I mean, up a paddle, up a, a river without a paddle. If he's up a paddle without a river, he isn't even in a worse situation. <laughs> up a river without a boat <laughs> at this point. Try to make the play yeah, happen. Seriously. Recon bolt will not connect. Skelly long range, no problem. That's 12 4. And well, it's going to be. Uh, this would be the most incredible full That's comeback good. if it were to happen for Ottawa. Yeah. We're going to be on another full purchase here. It's not going to look very good for them. Maybe a couple of rifles at best. Uh, and on the other side, I mean, you do have, of course, the power of the full buy fully in force for the side of York. The good news here is for the defense, you do have a showstopper. You do have a Hunter's Fury. You just have to connect. The efficiency of both these ultimates has to be high going into this round. You want to extend this map. That's very true. But on the other side, the blade storm from Denya is ready to go. So the, and that could be more than enough. And there it goes. Den Denya is going to pop it. Almost catches Jeremy there. The star's gonna go down and also give themselves a little bit of a one-way, but not gonna slow things down entirely. The Hunter's oh, Fury comes out, that will still slow them, and Cole will even find Tennels and gets the kill. They do lose the Cypher though, so no Neural Theft, and Denya just Spike walks into the connector to the defensive spawn. Spike is gonna be planted. If you're sitting here as Cole, you have to wait for elicitations. There will be a weapon for them to pick up and an opportunity to blow this play up from behind. Showstopper immediately. You have to find a kill with this and tries to go, but it goes over the head of the jet. It's down to the 1v1 situation through lamps, but elicitations will back up. Now Stig sees them cross. Paint shells to flush them up. It's really well placed, finds the kill. 1v1 from behind. And this is problematic because Denya may have an angle on this to get here quickly, but no tailwind. Wait, he's gonna stick the shot through the wall, not gonna be there, and there will be clutch, even the snap on to finish for elicitation. So life is still possible for Ottawa on the map. Pros don't fake, and elicitations eliciting some emotions out of me with that one. You gotta be bold and strong about it to hold it down, and that was huge, especially against Denya, who has been a star on the other side for York, right? To have the confidence to just stick that, that's huge. That's game changing right there. Keeps them alive for the another round and gives them an opportunity to try and buy some better weapons. Blade now has the op, but a few yep. members of this team don't have full armor. That could be crucial. And the Phoenix with an op is not a one for one linear exchange. Yeah. The jet with an op. That just has to be noted. You don't have the Definitely same escape not. tools. So you have to connect if you're gonna be playing this aggressively through B-Long. Stick aggressive in his own right, going through Hookah, finds one, stays alive. Good Nebula to keep them safe. Trying to get away, but Cole will force the issue. And actually that gravity well is very well placed as well from the defensive side. 
So we'll go to a 4v4 with tons of time on the clock. A gravity well well placed. I, I agree with you there. And now it's a 4-4 a situation. The slow rotation going to be covered here. Oh, but yeah, Kang just walks right in. Tennels, I, not even ready for it at all. Denny will get the trade here, but now this opens up the lamps for Kang to move up. Sees the cage, just frantically fires into cover. Doesn't get the kill, but lamps still in their control. If Cole can get the kill and does it, that's two more. Now it's a two on four, three on one situation here for Denya. Can they bring it back in the one on three? Most likely wants to save the op here, but uh, will they go for the hero play since they have so much, you know, so much room to work with? If he connects on the one, maybe. Seconds left. Just simply due to the fact that you should have a call out that Cole is low HP. <laughs> Wait, oh. what? Why? <laughs> That's, oh. that, that is not worth <laughs> That's self-BM right there. I don't, <laughs> and, and like, what a situation to waste a very crucial ult. Uh, yeah, not sure why we saw that, but I guess Denya will be able to save this up. Thanks to help that last little bit of smoke. Gonna look for an exit frag. There's none there, falls back. Uh, yeah, very odd that that neural threat would be thrown down. I mean, sure, the defense still has the run it back, they still have, I mean, some uh, some utility to work with. They got the Astro Alt as well, but that Neural Theft, that could have been a difference maker. Yeah, it, it really is, especially uh, considering the fact that from the side of Ottawa, I, I don't mean to kind of throw any shade or BM, but you know, if Cole is going to be falling a lot on these opening engagements, that's a big piece of utility for information that you need. I mean, he's 8, 14, and 7. He's not playing poorly, but the fact is the matter that he has been getting off the board maybe a little bit earlier than you would normally see when it comes to competitive Valorant, and when you mm -hmm. don't have that recon bolt defensively for a retake, oh that Neural Theft is the difference maker, so... You know, a small moment, don't mean to nitpick too much, but it is important to note, especially with the hopes of a comeback still on the cards to send this to an OT. Blade looking to get aggressive, does walk away with one. Is there escape though? There will not be. And really beyond that, there wasn't even hope for even trades to come through. It was just a solo mission. Now over through Hookah, Cole tries to get aggressive and we go to a 3v4 situation. Stig will not check his immediate what left locations, will even <laughs> things up. So it's now tied at a 3v3 situation. That was wild. Yeah, it doesn't check corners, gets punished for it. Uh, a lot of good information in the meantime was gathered by Skelly as they were scouting out a site while the action was going down. And while they did give a, a lot of opportunity, a lot of time for the defense to rotate, you can already see here the Phoenix going in, moseying their way. I'm sorry, uh, Jeremy on the Astro moseying in from the spawn area over towards A. But I mean, this very, very, very slow push from the attack, just giving the defense more room to get into position here as that spike then makes its way back over towards B. This is a great read though from Ottawa. These little spy v spy battles that are going on mean nothing. There's still so much utility oh. for King to play with. But the problem is Denya is entering in with an operator, finding some success with it. Jeremy, timing is going to be key. Here's the pitter patter of some feet near him. Hicks and checks it through the container. Guardian does the trick in York Strike. First 13 to six on Vine. That's a way to get your grand finals day started. A 13 to six victory right there. I mean, you are firing on all cylinders. I mean, sure, Universe Your Auto picked up six rounds, but I mean, I would say that was very convincingly a York map right there. Stig popping off the only one in the 300 to that 308 combat score, 2015 at seven. I uh, know triple doubles out here, but really, really <laughs> solid score lines for these teams. I mean, Stig, Denya, and KXN at the top of the lobby after that first map. That was absolutely big for the favor going into this. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that I feel like all the narratives we tried to set up pretty much did come to life. York took a pretty early economical advantage. First mm -hmm. half was a runaway for six straight rounds. A decent attempt for Ottawa to keep it 4-8, but once you lose that pistol, the pressure is just so overwhelming when you get onto your defensive half. Because even when you get to that third round, if you're not doing, if you're not, if you're not finding any convincing kills, you're still economically behind to what is normally that full gun round in round three of the half. So once that kind of becomes a little bit less secure, and then you also have the operator being earned time and time again for Denya, it just mm -hmm. becomes too much of an uphill battle. So. Um, yeah, I think a lot of the narratives that we framed up and some of the credit to Skelly for sharing that with us, you know, did come through for us there on Vine to allow York a chance to take that map from the early get-go. Absolutely, and I believe our next map, before we head to it, I believe we do know it is Haven. 
Uh, so that's the, a map where I'm really considering: Does University of Ottawa change their composition? Do they keep the Astro? Sure. Right? Do they? I, I'm, I'm anticipating the Rays will be likely be changed off. So like those are the kinds of things that they're likely be you know thinking of. I'm sure once that neural theft went down, they're like, all right, we just got to start thinking about the next map. And like they've been thinking about that composition. So I'm very interested to see how they change things up. Indeed, indeed. But before we head over towards that second map, again, you got to remember, if you're looking for everything social media CSL, you've mm -hmm. got to get on the brand new Instagram page. You need to be able to go through, check out all of the account. It's at CSL Esports GG. Stay up to date on what else is happening tournament-wise, the latest highlight clips. You have to imagine that Denia's headshot will likely be there. But Absolutely. beyond that, hey, I don't know about you, Dak, but I love free stuff. There's giveaways that they've got going on. CSL Esports GG. Follow right now. I'm already pulling up the phone. I'm getting ready for it. You got to. And of course, while you're doing that, we got to give a shout out to our absolutely fantastic sponsors, HyperX and Twitch Student, our valued sponsors for the CSL Esports Collegiate season. Without them, all of this wouldn't be possible. I've got my HyperX on right now. We're streaming on Twitch right now. I feel like we got our bases covered. Love to see it. We love the support. Thank you. And you need to stay tuned as well because there's going to be a chance to win other things focusing on, hey, name that boost. If you're a Rocket League fan, you want a chance to win some of that cool gear from HyperX, you got to head on over to CSL's Twitter's page and then get to the name that boost contest. Enter in your name, get a chance to win. You want that HyperX gear, I'll tell you. That's why we're sounding great, hopefully, hearing things <laughs> extra crisp and clean. So make sure you do that. Hashtag name that boost. You can also see it on CSL Esports GG on Twitter. I want to win that grand prize, I'm telling you. But before yeah. we get over to that second map, we will be throwing things over to a break. Before we do, hey, yep. the eSports at LSU has been widespread and love to see that happen. A lot of it has been through the support of their alumni. They had a chance to kind of talk with them to see exactly how this program came to life and why those alumni do love eSports. Um, I love esports and gaming in general. Um, I started gaming when I was around, I want to say, five or six years old. I have always been a gamer, so surrounding myself with esports has just come so naturally. Video game has just been a calling. It's been something I've been doing since I was a very young boy, right? A lot of my closest friends have come from esports at LSU. You know, working with people that I said have become some lifelong friends of mine and now giving that opportunity to the next set of students. And we started thinking about esports probably in the in the mid 90s, late 90s. We started to think this is a real cultural trend. We should be really doing it. And, and we got a nice preview. We got a lot to see what was happening in Korea, who uh, uh, sort of jumped into the esport realm long before anyone else did. Esports really is going to become uh, the future or an increasingly large part of what the future is like. And seeing the, the, you know, the sheer excitement, a number of people cheering and screaming and making noise, it was just like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be big in the US. And there's a lot of great things happening in the industry and I'm excited to see what the future holds for esports. And I do want to continue being involved in the industry. You know, even disregarding all of the, you know, all the friends we made along the way, making tremendous impact on other people's lives. Personally, it's helped me grow as a person.
into the atmosphere with cosmic presence we will light the way Welcome back, everybody, to our grand finals matchup here for York University and the University of Ottawa. It is the culmination of our CSL Valorant Collegiate season, the 2020-2021 season. It all comes down to this, and we're going to our second map. I am Dak alongside I Hold Ship. Alan, it's been a great set so far, but there's still more to go. Uh, what are your thoughts after having seen that previous map? Expectations? What are you thinking? What's on your mind? The buzz and the hype around Denny is merited and very real. We saw so many clutch shots coming out of the operator. A lot of it was kind of in an opening poke and prod situation where you're just going to hold an aggressive angle, walk away with a kill. Great. If not, use your typical baby bay tailwind, get out of dodge, reset, have some help around you. So all that communication and coordination from the side of York, very, very good. Now on the opposite side for Ottawa, to be fair, outside of the six rounds in a row that were, were dropped, some of it because of the fact that they weren't playing with the obviously full gun rounds. There were some things to look at and find some positives through. I mean, maybe bind is not exactly their bread and butter. We had a lot of engagements through hookah. A lot of it was just utility for utility. A lot of it did end up with Ottawa dropping first blood. So if they can try to find some sustenance in the early stages of the round, as we go into Haven coming up next, you have a lot more freedom to play with a more wide open map. So I definitely think there is potential here for Ottawa to send us to that third map overall. If they continue to play at the level that they just played at. I definitely agree. And I think you brought up a good point there. I mean, you mentioned before the previous map how Jet is such a huge X factor on Bind. Now that we're moving to Haven, Jet cannot be as dominating on Haven as, as she can be on Bind. That could be more than enough, I think, to maybe, you know, get a little bit of leverage against this team, right? University of Ottawa, uh, skill wise, I really don't think is very far off of York Uni University. Sure. It was a strategy, uh, composition, I think, too. And maybe just the map choice, like you said, by not may, might not be their play. We're going to Haven. I think if you pick Haven, you got to be confident to play on it, right? Like this is a map For that sure. teams try to avoid. So if you're playing on it, you, I'm hoping you have something up your sleeve. I would love to see it. And we're going to try to see some of that as we go into our composition agent select. I mean, at this point, everyone obviously knows that this is a very unique map in the structure of tactical FPS because you've got three different spike sites you have to worry about defensively, which naturally should give an advantage over to the attackers. But that said, if you're not good at baiting out utility while holding some of your own, those takes can be pretty exhaustive when it comes down to trying to work your way through some of the choke points overall. So with that in mind, I'm really putting a lot of attention over towards Ottawa to see how exactly they do hold themselves when they eventually get to the attacking side. Now they will be starting off onto the defense first and foremost. They're playing the Killjoy, which is not too rare, mm. but it definitely is more rare than seeing a Cypher. So that in combination with the Astra could also lead to some pretty deadly combinations. You think about a Gravity Well with the Nano Swarm on top of a default plant site. Defensively, that could be a big X factor that will have to be responded to if you're York. Absolutely. You know, the I was thinking because there are definitely pros and cons to like the Killjoy versus Cypher on any map, right? On this map, especially, I would say the Killjoy lockdown is probably diminished a little bit just because of the sheer size of this map, right? But like you said, yeah, the combination with Astra's utility could be enough. So would love to see how this works out on defense. University of Ottawa playing mostly towards C. I mean, historically teams, and it still is the case today, try to just mostly stack towards C and A, leave B a bit more open, and then kind of play it by ear, depending on how the attack takes it. And we're going to see how that goes out. Our second map of this series, Chip. You ready for this one? I'm ready. We might see our mm. champions at the end of this map, or we're going to a map three. We'll see how it plays out. 
Okay, so this whole setup right here is just for Kang to play for Intel. Everything's gonna have to come over towards C and, oh, how about that, elicitations. We'll actually grab first blood. Denio finding the trade will keep that garage entrance open. And well, how about it? All of the utility is going to be recalled. And that's a little bit premature if you're Kane, because there's still plenty of time for a rotation offensively. And that's exactly what's coming up. Oh, and now we're going to get that push all the way up a main. It's just the killjoy that's going to be, you know, throwing out the welcoming mat, so to speak. Has the terror to kind of open themselves up a little bit here. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, Give themselves a little bit of cover, but they have to back up. There's a, obviously a retake situation that needs to happen here, but it's all going to be funneled in from backside. There's no flank. There's no pinch. Nothing coming through a short. You've got absolutely zero information for this retake, and he's going to find one. The shock darts are great, but how about the nano storm? Actually, does take down Tennel, so now the retake is coming through. Jeremy, the first one forward. Skelly KXN wow. responding with a frenzy from Blade, keeping the play alive. One v one situation, and Blade is tagged down to literally just a single shot out of the classic. And well, time is also becoming a bit of a problem here. Skelly, happy to sit on the opposite <laughs> kitty corner corner. Skelly gonna get the jump on him here there's the shots come through york strike first with another pistol and blade was at super low hp but unfortunate that they gave themselves away you know flinging the muzzle of their pistol a uh, muzzle of their pistol sorry right past the uh the crates there to give the give themselves away a little bit but yeah that's a, just a hectic pistol round honestly could have gone either way went down to a one-on-one -on -one situation where it seemed like the attack uh you know had everything worse for wear for the defense, right? There was, like you said, no information to play with. There were smokes, there were cages, everything was thrown down, so much utility. The, the kitchen sink and then some. Still wasn't enough to stop that, uh, that you know, the spike from completely going off there. So it will be, at least the kills coming through and I'll be at that first round here for that yoke squad. Yeah, I think a lot of that is just a real feels bad that you pick up all of your defensive utility if you're Kang. Mm -hmm. I cannot imagine that they will make that same mistake twice. Well, actually, it's not even placed right now, so that's something to be said. <laughs> uh, but Tannel's on the way through. Aldron just to scout things out. Does see two players. It's actually a really important amount of information. And actually, King splits the offense. Now, you see the trap wire in play. That would have been a problem, but Skelly is actually the bigger obstacle to get through. So that'll be another first blood coming out. And as Denya just walks on to site, the spike will also rotate to get a plan. Oh, and, and they do have to be careful because there are two agents coming in from the flank opportunity. But I mean, the information, there was a risk reward to that, right? Like they got a little bit of information, but they lost their killjoy extremely early. They don't have any of that utility to work with now. And they give the, the site entirely to the attack. And while the flank is coming in through a main, Stig is putting in some pressure here. And that's making it difficult for the Sova Cole to do anything. As Skelly and KXN get some more elicitations, picks up one kill. is going to be able to heal themselves. But against a one on three, this is a huge ask. They're swinging themselves a decent curveball, but too many angles to hold. It'll be a second round here for the York squad. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to lead to, again, that very early economic advantage from the side of York's offense. I mean, you've got two successful plants that have come off with largely a number of players existing through both rounds. So once more, kind of like we're talking about in the second half for buying, take a look at what you've got on board for Ottawa. Zero dot economies, light armor. You have to figure that most of the utility is probably also not full valued. So what is traditionally a hopeful full buy round I mean, it's full weapons, sure, but it's not the same kind of power that you would normally expect. So even though York is playing with a disadvantage on the weapons, they actually do have a bit of an advantage when it comes to the utility they can use to soften up this defense. Early run it back, gonna be spent. Well, station's just clearing out a lobby. And while he's gonna find nothing, it's all about what happens defensively over through C Garage and Cole will actually take down first blood. Yeah, and, and the spike will make its way over onto the site, but so many players have been lost to try and make that push even happen. It's not even worth it. Cole goes into 26. We've got a lot of good damage done, plus some kills. And now it's like two on four situation. And you're not going to be able to hold off against multiple players coming in through both spawn and garage here, as you can see. The Sova and the Jet starting to read. Oh, wow. Actually gets the headshot as the curveball comes out, but not enough to get the kill. Tennels, though, for two. And now it's a one on one situation. He's got a Hunter's Fury. Not going to see anything with the first dart. Waits for the second. And then the third. Nothing coming there. Now Blade's going to get on top. And this might be a little bit too far for Tunnels. That's halfway diffused without doubt. Tunnels got the angle. quickly. You've got to go. It doesn't have the angle on it at all. The fuse will be stuck. And even though it's three kills for Tunnels, it will still be the round going the way of Ottawa. That is a feels bad man if I've ever seen one. Yeah, being really, really, not even cautious, but just 
I don't even know what the word to describe that is. You know that they're going to be going for the defuse. Uh, I don't think the recon dart caught them, but I mean, you kind of have to have a solid guess of where they are with that much time left. And yeah, Tentals will get a bunch of, of kills off of that, obviously. Puts them in a pretty solid position money-wise, but yeah, that's going to be a force buy coming out here. I, I don't know if I love the call. I mean, you are going to have Blade with this play, grabbing an early Blade Storm, so that's okay. Oh, but no. uh, I mean, a Force Buy is one thing, but you have to conceal the fact that it's a Force Buy. I think if you're playing this from Ottawa, the Blade Storm is obviously, once you earn it, you use it. But uh, it's just not exactly the efficiency you're hoping for, especially now that you've already lost three members. So you have to hope that there is something special in the tank here for Blade. And Blade now going to push themselves over towards Garage, but... Not sure if they know that Denya is waiting here because Kang didn't see him first, but Blade will get the trade. They lost Kang. They will get that one kill. It's a one on four now. I mean, Blade, the most they could do now is a try to do some economic damage, right? They're not gonna, likely not going to be able to get the defuse, but yeah. it seems like they most likely are just going to play it safe and, and fall back. I, I can't argue against that either. Yeah, I mean, you get the Phantom upgrade. It just it feels bad because you pulled out the Blades. Yeah, it's a risky force buy. This is something that like Xset would probably do. Uh, they do this a lot. Well, they mostly do it on the second round where like, hey, we lost the pistol. Let's force buy into pistols and SMGs just to kind of contest that third round. But um, this is a different situation in total. Blade, pretty fortunate that the spray went down. <laughs> yeah. Windy out here on Haven right now, but he still finds the first kill. And now it just comes down to make it so there's not a second point of contact, which does not look like there will be. So Phantom will be recovered, but the blade storm will come up a bit empty. Yeah, that force buy really put them in a bad situation. And if you're not positioning yourself to guarantee get trades off of every death, right? You're even really risking the value of that force buy to begin with. Uh, yeah, that blade storm really unfortunate. You can see the value too that that York gets out of just using these, just popping utilities. I mean, just that that one run it back completely sent University of Ottawa scrambling and resulted right. in two or three quick kills that Sig wasn't even near. But Sig just using the run it back forced the situation, forced their hand. And now with York has obviously the advantage coming into this one as they go for a uh, you know hold over towards D. That's not going to cut them out. But this is a full stack towards A for the attack. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate. The defensive recon bolt actually sees a ton, but mm -hmm. because Cole's the one dealing with the recon bolt, he can't throw any shock darts that direction, and he comes up a little bit empty from an opportunity. Kang falls. Skelly wins the gunfight immediately in the neural depth. Denya on the flank. Good opportunity for him to blow things up, but Elicitations is actually taken down too, so that's not bad overall. And a third. Curveball not badly placed. Denya responds to one, gets a second, and we've got a 1v1 jet on jet. There will, no, there will not be the anime battle because there is no knives in play, but we will still get the potential for a speedy 1v1 here. Denya tagged up so heavily, he's going to actually default to allowing Blade to make the first move, which obviously with the spike down isn't going to last for long. Absolutely not. And with just over 40 seconds left on the clock, Denya has to start to try to get some more information. They have such little HP, they can't just be raw peeking these angles. And in that time, Blade has started to make their way towards a short. Now they're playing musical chairs with each other, left. going back to hold the exact same angles at the exact same time, but with less time left on the clock. Denya now going to try to swing. Almost had a great opportunity to actually uh, clock him on the side, but Blade was just in that corner just in time. So Denya will be able to get the spike down, but will they be able to hold this post plant? Spike he's, plant. Played it, he's put this in a really great position on the opposite side of the Radiantite boxes, but this is going to come down to... Have you said your prayers? The Valorant timing gods know not the case. Blade gets the jump, and how about that? All of a sudden, Ottawa find themselves just down around. Yeah, not a bad place to be in, especially considering they were, you know, used to spending their money willingly earlier and then off of a thrifty round right there. Definitely can't be mad about that. Gets themselves back into the game with a decent amount of credits to spend here. Of course, they got to spend it all now, but if they lose any of this, they won't be, they'll have to likely save and do another eco round next round if they you know don't get the most out of this and uh well we'll see how this pans out not too bad both these teams pretty close economically utility you know weapons there are a bunch of you a bunch of ultimates though here for university auto they have four ultimates ready to go yeah. so that's uh, that would likely be the difference maker coming into this yeah then he's gonna hit blades from here obviously so you're gonna have the potential for some instant kill pressure that could be established here but I'm really curious to see defensively 
how do you want to start this off? And okay, it will be a Hunter's Fury first and foremost. That'll be sent down C long. It does tag KXN, so some information has been gained. But watch this. Denya's going to push right through this. You can just feel it. As soon as he hears or sees anything, he's in. But instead, it's going to wait to see if someone's going to check him. That will not be the case. And as first blood was initially found by Stig, the kill is exchanged. We go for V4. Oh, Denya now finally going to push them through garage just a little bit. But slowly dipping their toes in here, waiting for that smoke cover to go away. And I don't think he actually saw either of them. Oh, yeah. Just I think that little bit of, you know, the muzzle there kind of threw them off a little bit. Tried to get that left swing, but couldn't confirm the blade storm. And now here comes the run it back all the way through spawn. The spike's still not down just yet. There's 40 seconds left on the clock. Elicitations gets two, makes it to 3K. And then Blade cleans it up right in garage. I'm not gonna lie, I I'm a bit surprised that York decided to hard commit to going to C still. As soon as you hear that run it back be triggered, and especially after you lose Denya mid-map, you've got so much space to work with because no way, no how, are you gonna hit a run it back if you're elicitations without somebody watching your back? Because there's not a lot of information on what's actually on site. So as soon as you hear that call, because I mean, you know, Denya got taken down by elicitation, so you know where that run it back is. I'm a bit surprised they didn't just get on their high horse and just quickly rotate over towards a B grass pit or so specifically brave. over towards A to try to test Kang one more time, but that doesn't come through. Maybe a bit of stubbornness for York does cost them a bit of a penalty as they will be tied up at three. And then beyond that, they are hurting a little bit in the economy as you still have a zeroed out eco for Stig. And then beyond that, just a specter in hand for Tennels. Yeah, this is a bit of a sticky situation here for the attackers. York has no, I mean, a good amount of utility, sure, but they have two players who are low on armor, and Stig is one of them. So one of your entry fraggers not having full armor, that's a big deal. And then, of course, the two ultimates with the defense, they have that lockdown ready to go. So that's something yeah. that could easily be popped here as we go into that minute mark. Both teams playing super slow, just looking for a pick, trying to see what information they can get. Tennel's gonna get sucked in there by the wav the, the Wavity Grill <laughs> and throws out that that, <laughs> that that dart, trying to get a little information, doesn't find anybody there in heaven, but now the plants have come through. It's a good Nova Pulse. And how about this? Okay, the lockdown's gonna come through, but watch where York is positioned. They're gonna try to play this through B. The cosmic mm. wall is gonna also build some separation, and now all of a sudden, as KXN falls, you can just hop and start defusing this. There is nobody anywhere near this. Alarm bot is triggered. And now it's just down to the retake. Not gonna be there in time. One so good stuff raid. coming through offensively. Stig even finding a couple of eliminations to keep things, again, even in the kill dispersal. So, but regardless of that, it's a nice defense still for Ottawa. That's three rounds in a row. Yeah, about the same time they got the lead last map too. So we're, we're matching the flow so far, but this is where York started to run away with things, right? And they turned into a, I believe an eight, four half at the, the beginning of that first map. So York now on the offense, they haven't been able to crack the code every single time consistently. They've been doing a really good job of getting the spike down, but the post plant on the defense has been, you know, contestable. So now as we go into this one, still not full buys. Tennel still doesn't have full armor. You know, the, the only bit of good news, and I will say this, you know, Stig does find a handful of eliminations at the end. The spike was still planted, so the economy is okay. It's obviously not great, and, and you're yeah. at a disadvantage here, but you're still combative when it comes to these full gun rounds in some form. Uh, another bit of early pressure being established over to see Garage. You can see even the Algon's gonna be committed to move forward. That star is an important one. Keep an eye on that. I was about to say, there's an opportunity to gravity well this and then just spam this doorway, but, well, it'll be the proactivity from York first and foremost to find first blood in a 5v4 situation with 57 seconds on the clock. And York just slows it right back down after they get that pick. They have information. There's no point in pushing C, really, and they're not going to. They're going to rotate slowly back towards A, B. It's not really worth pushing that because it's just so easy to rotate. You already see due defenders already waiting there, but even if they weren't, the rotation to see is too easy. Some smokes to go out to try and give the illusion that a push is happening through garage, but that might actually just be a telegraph here. You can see the Killjoy playing a little more aggressively defensively, looking for some information. And now the run it back coming in through A main as Tennels picks off Kang and bites off a little more than they can chew. Yeah, Kang really just needed to get one. One for their life is actually okay. But Stig, even beyond that, off the run it back, finds one more. Now, retake-wise, I mean, you've got an economy to play with, so you could still go for this, but if you lose both weapons without finding kills, 
there will be an economical decision to be made. And you're kind of already seeing that. Los Patients is looking for exits. And yeah, this was going to be a chalk up round. They're going to give this one away. Hope that they find a couple of forward pushing kills, but it doesn't look like York are interested in giving those away either. No, definitely not. And you can see they're not even peaking at all. You know, I, I don't know if they have Robin Hood in Canada. I was going to say maybe they should have bought some Doge. That would have helped them out econ economically if they had bought a little bit of that. But I, I don't know if that's, if that's even a thing in Canada. But they can all push all the way back. Spike will tick down and will go off. And they're going to hold all of those rifles. So, I mean, that that's really big here for York because they didn't have too much money to work with at the end of this round. They don't have to rebuy rifles. All they got to do is rebuy armor. KXN. Yep. Is the only one with an ult, but Tennels is about to have Hunter's Fury. Could very well likely get it in this round, and Skelly could have Neural Threat too. So this is where you could try to start getting a little bit of momentum, but you might have to burn a little bit of resource to do it. Yeah, this is actually okay though. I, I think overall from Ottawa because oh, interesting. I was about to say you've got Blade, who's got a Blade Storm ready to go. There was enough economy for them to essentially purchase for each other. So Blade will actually save the Blade Storm, go on to a light armor Vandal this round, and then if this goes poorly, then you've got the Blade Storm for your eco coming up after that. But you really don't want this round to go poorly. And oh my goodness, elicitations, aggressive, good help from wow. Kang. They find two, but it's immediately traded. And beyond that, from the shadows is also pop and KXN has taken over heaven. Yeah, I mean, those are great trades, but the attack got more out of it because like you said, KXN get right into heaven and takes things. But now you also have the flank that's being covered by Tennels who's pushing right back in towards that later A long position. Almost gets Blade, but just barely whiffs. And now Jeremy going to be moving in towards spawn. It's a three on two situation, but the jet is low. Jeremy looking in towards heaven, gets that rid of that standing. dart. Blade finds Skelly and then Jeremy oh. quickly flicking up towards heaven to get that last kill. It's a beautiful read from Jeremy. I don't know if that information was already acquired that there was someone in heaven. I mean, you probably figure, hey, we've cleared everything besides mm -hmm. heaven. And you also heard that from the shadows get popped at the beginning of the round. So it's a heck of a read, but a, at least from our POV, a hell of a snap. <laughs> Say yeah. that much. So that's a huge round defensively. So now all of a sudden you've earned the lockdown. You're pretty darn close to a run it back and a hunter's fury. Just a couple of points away from each of those. And you can say the blade storm. So everything turning up roses right now for the side of Ottawa. And on the opposite side, you're still okay to full buy here if you're York. It just comes down to how do you want to execute? We have yet to really see Denya open up the site with like a cloud burst and then a dash into it. So maybe something to maybe try to test this defense over towards a in a different way. But this recon bolt once again, so much information will allow those stations to come through. But fool me once, oh shame God. on me, fool me twice. Okay, I was going to say a little bit of shame on you comes through a little bit later than expected. And we've got ourselves a 4v4. Yeah, you know, I actually was even surprised that they pushed through that cage as York thought they were playing super slow, waiting for the information, waiting for the defense to come to them. That being said, they do get the trade, and a bunch of the attackers uh, held their position there too. So once again, they're going to be dealing with Kang on site, which is a position they've been in before, and they've been able to take care of Kang, but that's when Kang's playing aggressively. Kang's playing in the back. He's playing in that shotgun position in the pocket, trying to hide behind the radiant. I gets one, fine. then Skelly finds the other. That's perfectly fine. Going one for one's okay. The plant will come through, but you've got a 3v3 situation. It really, for me, just comes down to can Cole find information on this retake because scaling in a corner will be figured out. Recon bolt denied, but the retake is on the way forward. Jeremy falls, now a 2v2. Shock dart comes out using the cloud burst. Blade's gonna try to stick this stone, does not expect Tettles to be as close as he was. 1v2 for Cole. No more utility to play with, but should know where the final two players are. Just comes down to is there time to clutch this up? Maybe not going to make a difference, though. KXN puts the point into a moot contest. Call those shots. Just going right over the, the right shoulder. It's barely whiffing. That's another round on the board here. These, these teams trading now with only two rounds left in the half, both even. And this is a big, neither team can really get the full strength. I think that's really been the story of this game so far. Is not that like, single op, yeah. you know, they not a single op. They've, you know, if they do get the full buys, they're doing so with very little credits left. I mean, only now is York starting to get a little more money thanks to Tennel stacking some kills this previous few rounds. But yeah, they haven't been able to get ops out. They haven't get the full armor here. Kang is still at half armor for the defense. And you know, these teams scrambling with the little resources they have. Jeremy needs to stay alive. Okay, and I was about to say, this is essentially a force by situation with the Blade Storm. So this is Ottawa sitting here and telling us that they want to play for a 7-5 half. You lose this round, though. 
Five seven might be in your future, and Blade already drops. No more Blade Storm for the defensive jet. Denya floating around the top side. Tennel's looking for a plant with the gravity. Well, and oh my goodness, this setup Ooh. for the hot hands as well does a lot of damage. Lockdown now coming through. Retake quick to be here. Elicitations, though, not going to find anything off the run it back. Offensively, going to get Hunter's Fury. Do you need to deal with this lockdown, and it will be destroyed. Denya will hold the site. That was major right there. 50 seconds left on the clock and that lockdown now out of commission. With a four and three situation, they can now start to think about a plant on C and indeed it's gonna come through. Kang Planted. looking for a way to get in through garage, but doesn't realize that they're gonna get counter flanked uh. by Stig who's coming in from behind, but they might run into the jet first. Den, you're waiting, 16 HP, got that, the gamer number. No and Kang Ooh. finds Tenno's first, doesn't get the Den yet. Then Elicitations gets Skelly. Den, you're waiting for Cole, gets that one. Enemy but Elicitations finds him. And then the trade with Stig at 22 HP, cleans it up. Teams trading left and right, but Last Stig, the anchor the right now, holding on, makes it six to five. Yeah, and uh, you know, there's it's a small moment in the mix of all of that, but Cole was on the A site throughout almost all of that engagement. Essentially, as soon as the defensive lockdown yeah. came through, he hard rotated to A. So you don't even have the defensive pressure of the Hunter's Fury in the mix. And I, I think it's a bit of a mistake because if you feel like your defensive lockdown is going to push out the attackers into C long, that's the most free Hunter's Fury to come through off the next engagement that you'll ever see. Or beyond that, if they if the, the offense is going to use a Hunter's Fury to destroy the lockdown, you've got a free counter Hunter's Fury into the Sova. So it's a bit strange, but at least he does find the one opening elimination here with it. The problem is KXN was still committing to find one trade. But it still will favor the defense at the end as Blade is able to find a third kill in the round, leaving to a 4v2 situation to try to tie this half up 6-6, six, six, and that pressure might just do it. And this is just going off the rails right now. <laughs> Kills left and right. Neither team able to get position, but it's that very aggressive defense led by Kang. That really does the trick there. Makes it a 6-6 six, six half. Love to see it here in Grand Finals. And, and yeah, that was... Pretty crucial, moving all the way up in there. That initial kill with the Hunter's Fury, which gave the defense even the option to move in towards the attacker's spawn was key. Right. And then, you know, you know, uh, transition over to that round win. So that was big, 6-6. Six, six. You love to see it going to the second half. In no operators. No operators. That, I mean, that's, that's the real, I mean, the baffling thing. I mean, if you were to look at the overview, a lot of diffuses yeah. came through for the defensive side, but of course that means that offensively there was a lot of plants that were in the mix. So it's just kind of strange to not see the economy be in a position to allow those ops to come into play. Just not for the first half, things could obviously change. And as Yorick will transition to the defense, opening curveball through mid window, this will be a B execute, at least initially to see if Lusitations can find a first blood. And it's the first one we're seeing too. I don't think we've seen any B excuse at all no. this entire map. And then you most often see why. Yeah, Skelly is is right there, immediately gets the kill on Nicole. They are gonna try to push in. I mean, waiting and hesitating after that initial death, you don't wanna do it, but they can't find another kill. And they move back, meanwhile, leaving their Phoenix solicitations onto site, who will eventually rejoin them, but they don't get much done. I'm so the execution I'm fine with, I, I'm a bit confused on why there were not stars placed in those corners. Nova pulses, gravity wells, or nebulas, any of the three would have been fine. Now you've got KXN pushed up a lobby. Him Down finding a single a. kill is fine. You've got numbers defensively here for York. Beautiful flash. Stig gonna find one, wants the second, grabs that as well. And it comes down to Kang, who's about to be flanked. Not even gonna need to happen as Stig takes down a third. And did he find the ultimate herb? No. Nah. No, wait, yeah, so. he did. Yeah. Some, oh, did he, he? I think he does. So he's on four okay. of six after the three kills. That's actually pretty massive for an early run of back. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> gotta love it. And now Stig going to have four to six the next ultimate build. So I guess that's why we haven't been seeing those B pushes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sure, it was pistol around, but it's it's has to be one of the hardest sites, I think, to take on attack in the entire game. You can see why just oh. defense rotate. I mean, I, I in, on pistol round, it could be. And maybe some other rounds, maybe not, but... It, it's the fact that there's no smokes as a part of that. What in yeah. the free fire is that? I mean, <laughs> that's this... Golly. Literally firing range. You pre-smoke, put a ping in the corner, and just spam with SMGs, and you walk away with two kills. It's moments like that that I, I, I want to find success with when I play this game. <laughs> 
If only. And that's going to be <laughs> right. The, the drone will uh, scout out a short as Denya finds Blade. So that completely slows things down for the attack. Any kind of hope they had to try and get the little momentum going has gone down the drain. Uh, and that uh, shorty, you're not going to get much done either. It was a headshot, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was too barely you hate, even, you hate barely even did any damage. <laughs> Literally a paper cut to the dome. Wow. <laughs> Oh, oh man. That, well, that was a round, I suppose. That was a round. I mean, it's an expected defensive round win. I, I still think, though, in the anti-eco from the offensive POV on this map, with <laughs> with an Astra, there's an opportunity to get a plant off. You just got to be really good about knowing how you want to search for your information. You've got to get great value out of Cole. You've got to have really well-timed smokes to come down from Jeremy. And maybe there's a chance to do something. Gravity, well, this should be a kill on a KXN. He's just barely able to get away. Paranoia's gonna be used very early on. That is a huge pull, pull off the paranoia early for the offense. This should be an A execute. Yeah, they're already right on site. The drone helps them out, clears out uh, heaven just a little bit. Spike goes down. And again, no flank ready. They're looking for maybe even a little pressure over towards Connector, but the utility continues to come down. Jeremy gets out with their life and tack 68 HP. A bunch of members of the attack were tagged there. Elicitations finds Skelly, gets two, but then goes down after. Denya's also tagged up in a corner. So you're really looking at KX then to try to keep this defense alive for the retake. But this post plant all the way deep. You just don't have any tools to break this up. Cole will find KXN, literally a single point of HP for Stig, running and gunning his Kang, no problem. And it, that's just a really good call from York. That early paranoia pull is everything. It's absolutely everything. You just wait for your effects to fade away. And by the way, you can still be running forward while those effects are fading away. Then you just dive on in. You know that KXN is completely overwhelmed. He's used two smokes. He's used the paranoia. That's a very good call for York to keep the gas pedal down. And now University of Ottawa, after that, a little bit oh, of a pardon me for there. Ottawa, I'm sorry. For uh, I'm After that pickup, that was, uh, hey, you know, coming from the US, man, sometimes just Canadians, uh, well, I can't even say states, state territories. I'm not even, I'm not even gonna continue with my geography lesson here, but <laughs> I would say the only really uh, drawback from that, or I guess takeaway was that elicitation is the only one that went down. So the only one with that light armor coming into this. There's the run it back from Elicitations who comes in making the most out of this life. Stays alive on the run it back with eight HP and opens up that C site. But Garage is still being held here by KXN. Yeah, this is great. The spike was never a part of this and KXN has even the odds to a 3v3 and can potentially play through a flank just for a retake. You can allow this spike to go down Take and play flight. around the back if you want to, but it looks like KXN will sit there and say, eh, maybe not. I mean, there's an alarm bot to keep them safe from behind. So this retake will be a little bit more traditional. Tennels with a late Aldron will actually be able to tag one, trying to find the timing on the blade, but they're good for one elimination at least. Second one, not gonna be there. Stig is able to respond and has the hot hands to self-sustain a touch. 2v2 situation. And well, the timing of this is going to be everything because the nano storm is going to slow things down. You're going to have Kang playing through C Garage. The blaze wall is about to fade. And oh boy, you've toggled for the diffuse, but Jeremy will clear. Kang will take the second peak. There's really nothing you could do here. So two rounds in a row coming through for Ottawa. Good stuff. I honestly didn't expect the round to even go their way after KXN got those two picks off Garage, right? Like they completely cleared the site, but they almost didn't. The run it back worked out well. KXN almost having enough to get it done. But yeah, really solid retake there. Two rounds on the board for both of these teams here. And it looks like uh, that will, I mean, very obviously prompt the York squad to go for an eco here. So anti-eco for the University of Ottawa squads. They're completely full bought out. Still no ops, obviously, but they have full rifles. Kang will be able to get an op if they stay alive and maintain in this next round. Skelly looking to put some defensive pressure through the mid through C garage. Gonna be denied by a sentry turret. Can be menacing at times, especially on the eco. Spike will be planted freely. Retake is quick to try to get here though. And there will be some pressure through C garage. The sentry turret denied, but the look at the post plant. All five players for Ottawa will be playing deep. Uh, nice attempt here for Denya. Will be denied. Shock dart's actually well placed. If we're being honest, Stig's able to find one. And meanwhile, you got to keep in mind that the retake from the front is actually gaining some ground as well. 
going to be enough for too much to happen, though. So it's just a single kill. KXN caught in a gravity well. Will not have time to get over. Nova Pulse also just in case. And look at all that pre-fire. Not much you can do here about this. Oh, oh, KXN, though, does get that kill on Jeremy. Yeah, not too much you can do, but at least the two kills on Cole and Jeremy are better better than nothing, right? You got forcing them For to sure. rebuy a little bit here. I mean, obviously, they'll still be have a little bit of credits left, but... You know, it's Kang who's going to have to, you know, be a little bit of a, a bank account for the team if they lose again. Yeah, that was just a, a little bit of a rough push. When you're on that eco, you know, and that eco round, just trying to make the best out of getting those kills. But a lot of the team were spread out for the defense. They couldn't trade off of each other properly, which is certainly crucial on that eco round. So now coming into this next one, nine to eight, three unanswered rounds here for University of Ottawa. I think that's the, that's the first time we've seen three unanswered since the first half. So pretty solid from them. Oh, this is going to be such a quick take towards C. You Skelly getting tagged is so huge. Cosmic Divide will come down as well to make the offense a little bit safer. Oh, Skelly, so much information off that trap wire, though. Just comes to the timing. I was everything is muffled and largely muted. But the timing to come across, no blade snaps on him. A huge first kill. And once more, Ottawa's post plant heavily stacked through C long. That is, wow. What a pickoff there. And now the Cosmic Divide goes down. That prompts the run it back from Stig. And this is just perfect, right? They're just delaying. They're just playing this stall a little bit. And then eventually running in as the attack's not expecting it. Stig, though, can't even see what he's doing as he tries to run. And now here comes Hunter's Fury. Denya finds elicitations, though. And now it's a four on four. But two members of the attack oh are really tagged up. This is still doable, though. Absolutely still doable. Tennels is sticking. Cloudburst will block. Oh, no, the Diffuser gets killed at the last second. It's halfway down the gravity well. We'll pretty much confirm it. And yeah, that operator right there will be not pulled by any teams coming forward. Oh, it got dicey. Denius Heroics almost paying the difference maker once more. Yeah, that was... What a scramble of a fight right after that cosmic divide. You had Stig run in there and Stig almost got everything done off that run it back. Almost found the Astra and then some, I'm sorry, the uh, the, the Jet and the Omen inside of Cubby. Just way too much utility in the way. And then he had Denya unable to confirm it. That shock dart at the end, just really, really huge damage. That was big. And now a 10 to eight lead here for University of Ottawa. Looking good. Yeah, Denya's gonna go into the blade stream. We also have a Marshall for KXN. So it's, it's kind of like a weird <laughs> half by situation. But how about the push through? UP window, Denya. Timing. Oh, no, no, not going to find one. Stig does trade. But is, this is a really dangerous weapon to try to collect. He's going to oh, even yeah. use the blaze wall, trying to bait out the opportunity to grab it. But look how quickly the attackers are coming back. Even the lockdown being used here, which is a bit odd. No one's going to be detained by this, but as they make their way backwards, they will isolate a couple of more picks, and that's good news for Ottawa as they start to stack together and try to execute once more back over towards C. Yeah, even though Stig got that trade on Denya, I mean, it gave away the position or the information that there were at least two flankers now for the defense, for the attackers to worry about. Once they got those two kills, they knew there was only two members left in spawn. They got those easy kills. Tennels finds two there, but Jeremy will put him down for the count. Now it's a two on one. This is actually still doable for KXN. Yeah, but you got a Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the armors have been hit up. There is still potential for one taps, maybe to the chest. Timing here is everything. Misses just a bit wide. Second also not there. <laughs> NT for the no scope. Man, if he's yeah. got any other weapon, yes, very doable. But the Marshall pickup, well. Yeah, I, I definitely say I, <laughs> I, I, I jumped the gun. No pun intended there, but... Yeah, you got to land those shots of the Marshall. Of course, you don't. That's a really hard retake, but 11 8. This is looking great. Five rounds unanswered here. And, and the best part, too, is that these rounds are being won by University of Ottawa. They're barely losing members. They're able to hold yeah, on economically so really well. Like they haven't been spending money on new guns, new armor. Like they're just holding it. So even if they lose these rounds economically, they're chilling. More aggression from Denya has to deal with the Aldrum, which actually did tag his teammate of Skelly, who's going to forfeit the site for a touch, but there's still plenty of utilities set up defensively. A bit of patience being held on to for Ottawa. And that will earn the run it back. So playing just for the ultimate orb. Well, the tags will come through. Solicitations will not be full HP, but the run it back will... You have to feel like that's going to be what they want for the execute. Definitely. And that execute might take a little more time as the... Spike isn't fully committed. KXN gonna use a, a little bit of, yeah, that, that's that's exactly what they wanna know. 
And now the they, they know. Turret, that, yeah. Sorry, I was so the sentry turret being there means that this was likely going to be a B or a C hit. You wouldn't put that sentry turret down any other reason why. Oh. <laughs> That's the ultimate feels bad. Run it back. Okay, never mind. And through the blaze wall. Help is on the way, but Denya has to get out. No tailwind. We'll survive. Skelly for one, trying to hold on to the site. We go 4v3, favor to the defense. And Denya's still super low, but has that angle oh, and okay. finds Jeremy, makes it look easy, and even gets a little bit of damage done as Tenels finds Kang. And uh, it, it was worth cutting me off right there because, yeah, that turret placement was very crucial and, and was really like the telegraph, right? Like, that's kind of like playing your cards for sure yeah. in that situation. So we're going to see, I believe, a replay from there and get to relive those moments. Denya with 11 HP gets the pick and just makes it even worse for wear for this last, uh, and not even, the spike didn't even get down. Yeah. The right. timing of all of that was was absolutely perfect. You even saw in that replay, the paranoia coming across the map meant that no one could deal with the recon goal. So there was just so much information, which is why Denya probably feels as confident as he does to hold that angle. It's like, okay, I got two players in the backside of this Radiantite box. This should be a pretty easy pick for me, even though I don't have my Tailwind back. But again, he finds one kill. He earns that back because he got one earlier. So it's a bold strategy, Cotton, but it pays off for him. Tennel's going to be chested now for the first time over towards B. Shock darts are pretty well placed, plus the angle. Blade, you got to hug that side a little bit harder there, brother. But the spam shots coming back through are good for some even exchanges. Neural theft in the mix. Solicitations also keeping the pinstripe kill feed in play. And we go to a 3v2 overall. Skelly not going to get the Kang. So now trade that 2v2, but Stig playing for the back. Yeah, this is a solid position for Stig. Might be able to cut them off and does. Kang gets that one Love and it. then run it back for the two. Can't get there in time. Tried to throw the curveball first. And now it's Denya who has to fall back here because the spike is running all the way over towards Zay and they don't know it just yet. This should still be a full retake. I was about to say, I love the use of the run it back there because the timing will be so great to allow Denya to move forward, but actually plays it a bit safe. Recon bolt denied. Second curveball comes through. This is gonna be a double peak situation. Cole around the back, but gives up his position. Oh no. I, if you just hold on to the trigger a little bit longer, you're behind both players for the easiest double kill of your life, but gets a little bit antsy and shoots at the wall. Not sure if he thought there was going to be a pre-timing on the peak, but that would be a costly decision. And now all of a sudden, York is within one. No, I, I think you said it right there. They got antsy. That just happens. They, they couldn't dodge, dip, duck, dive, and dodge their way out of that situation. And now with an 11-2 scoreline here, two rounds that were necessary for this York squad to get back into it, as Denya will be able to maintain the op again as full credit out. Even if they lose it, they'll be able to rebuy the op or have Stig to rebuy it for them. So economically, they're looking solid. Stig eclipsing that 20k mark there. 11 to 10 scoreline. And this is the same real play out from the attack that we've seen in these previous rounds. Somewhat favor towards C, leaving A a little bit of a vacuum for the defense to play a little more aggressively to deal with that flank. But still, the spike has not gone moving just yet. As Cole grabs that ult orb. Yeah, I was watching his Aldron on the minimap. It didn't even push up C long. Wow. It's a weird timing stuff. That's Spike a beautiful down, shot hey. from Stig to get the headshot cleanly, mind you, at that. Also information that the spike has been dropped over towards A lobby. So the defense will kind of fluctuate and flex just a touch. Maybe to make accommodations for what could eventually be an A play. Jeremy will go into Astral form, just trying to collect some stars and seeing maybe where they want to try to reset some of the setups overall as the hit is starting to make its way down A long. And the defense is going to take a long walk to get over there once they know it's happening. Yeah. Stig, though, catches elicitations. That was huge. Now only three players to push up on here. They might be able to smoke themselves up again onto the site. But the post-plant retake here is going to be more than doable, though. Jeremy and Blade get two. And now they've evened things up. Yeah, that's a bit too over aggressive, I think, overall, looking at that from the perspective of Tennels. Like, you need that utility to retake here. And if you fall, no recon bolt. I don't know if he had an all drone still, but at least no recon bolt makes life difficult kicks. Then bold shrouded step to get on. Recon bolt gonna come through. Offensive hunter steward to delay the defuse. So you know that this post plant is gonna be set up. Paranoia is gonna come through. KX then pushing into the zone. Uh, dark cover, but Blade finds the kill. Wow. Denya falls. And maybe for the first time, Blade, no, he's not gonna pick up the operator. He's defaulting to keeping the Vandals. So interesting play Matt call, but point. Matt Point still coming through here for Ottawa, 12-10. That is a very, very clean post-plant situation there for the University of Ottawa squad. Yeah. 
And elicitations was the leverage right there. Getting that early kill, just making it so difficult for the attack to maintain position on the site. They had to hold the right corner because elicitations was holding territory on the left half. That was crucial. And now going into this next round, University of Ottawa, still ton of rifles, ton of armor to work with. Skelly doesn't have full armor. A KXN only has a sheriff to work with here. This is looking rough for York. Skelly is getting bold trying to deal with that. Hot Hand's also coming through. I'm not sure how he's still this healthy after only having 100 HP. And Denya forcing him to the Operator still finds one Skelly a second. Okay. Not enough ammunition to grab a third. And KXN, who also wanted to contest, denied. Run it back, gonna come through. That's defensively. So Stig trying to make their way on. Timing is okay, finds one. And also I believe saw the rotation one through the backside. Pedals is there, ready for it. He'll it's find both and York stay alive. 12, 11 goes the count. They are not done just yet. If Denya has an up in their hands in the grip, they can still stick it. And that was huge. Skelly also really showing up on that round to hold the right side of that site. And now we potentially could be going overtime here, Shift. This is going to be great. I'd love to see it, but it's not confirmed just yet. Blade still has that. I mean, Blade is a frenzy. Actually, for the defense, I mean, yeah, they're, I mean, for the attack, they're they're really not full bought out at all. So this is actually not a guaranteed route for them, not whatsoever. The way. defense must be happy about that. Elicitation is going to want to play for this ultimate orb. He's one away from running it back, and also one of three members is holding an AR. So you feel like you've got to get him this run it back in the some form. Tennels, Aldrone. You should run. He's going to see where the lockdown, lockdown is. This is going to be interesting. So again, this is all about trying to clear up some space, but interesting. There's going to be the full counter towards the lockdown. That'll destroy it. And the entire time, this is just a bait, but it's really not all that well executed. I mean, you, you can see that York are thinking, wait, they just faked it. They're going to go see, but now it's on to Stig. 1v1, wins it, no run it back in play now for Ottawa. Yeah, and that completely just diminishes the effect of that fake. Stig gets another one, what a shot on Blade. And with 82 HP, still holding strong, keeping their foot down. Gets another one on Jeremy, that's three, can they get the 4K? No, Cole shuts him down, but so much damage done with a 4 and 2 situation, this is impossible for Kang. And that is it. We're going to overtime. It's not done just yet. York oh. seemed like they were falling behind, but then they just pump it back and they force OT. We're getting a replay. We got to. This is one of the nastiest flicks I've seen in Valorant. No joke. Like, watched a lot of Valorant. This is unbelievable. Boom. One headshot up top. Not even weak whatsoever. I mean, this first kill, sure, needs to win it. That's for essentially controlling the run it back situation. But over the top of the blaze wall, this is a no-fly zone blade. Beautiful three kills from Stig. Whew, looking like Halo 3 SWAT out here. Just taking headshots easily. That was, what a flick. That was amazing. And it earn that is a that those are the kinds of plays that you put up on the fridge and earn you a spot in OT. <laughs> you you got to right. That's a resume builder right now. And now it's just even things up. And now he's even see a little bit of pressure coming out from Stig right up B. I mean after after that last play, they're feeling even more confident. They're going right up the middle of the map. But the defense is not going to take that bait, and they're going to stay slow and wait for the push. Both teams playing very hesitant now. So many easy, low-hanging fruit puns that people work. He's on I know. Check. He's warming up. He's hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> but things will cool off just a touch. And the patience being executed here from York. And largely for Ottawa, they've held on to a lot of utility. They haven't spent really all that much whatsoever. The only big difference is you are seeing Cole start to rotate back over towards C. So they are thinking they might need that information gathering utility sooner rather than later. Operator also in the hands for Denya. Keep that in mind. That's all he has. No cloud bursts, no updrafts, just a tailwind and an operator with the purchase. And while A is completely shut off here, you do see Skelly trying to scout a little bit. If they could open up this site, that would be a great rotation opportunity. But the spike is going to move towards that C site as Elicitation shut down Stig over in Garage. KXN will get the trade. Oh, and almost the back site, almost getting another one. But Jeremy finds Tennels first. I think Denya used his tailwind to get away from that play through Garage. There was the shock darts, hot hands coming through. Gravity well is so well placed, but... Not going to use it. Time becoming a problem. But keep your eye out for Skelly. Long flank. He's got to find success. And sooner rather than later, now actually immediately, he's going to have to clean up all these kills. Just not giving enough time for him to get the spike and plant. 
Yeah, well, that <laughs> that moment right there tells you how he thought about the time that was available. So it's not going to be there. Yeah. First defense, good for the side of Ottawa. And Switching honestly, sides. they're going back to the offensive Match side now where they were great. I was going to say, that dude would have to be the flash to, to get all those kills and the spike down in 10 seconds. You have to stop time there. Yeah, yeah that this was really, really big, right? They are now in a position where they've yeah. been strong. They looked really good in that second half. They're full block. Don't have to worry about any players low or anything like that. But the difference is there are no operators on the Don't field. Denya is not waiting with the op on defense. That is a really big X factor here for the attack. Once they figure out that there's no op waiting and they know where that jet is, they can start to push that envelope. This, uh, I've had some problems with Cole's owl drones. That doesn't give you any information at all. Uh, you're using it to try to clear out a lobby. It's denied. The defense can still rotate. So you really don't yeah. get anything off that owl drone. It, it feels like you're just kind of throwing 300 credits at the wall at that point. Uh, if you do also still have the ability to recharge an early recon bolt. So that's going to be okay for trying to play off information. But not having that owl drone to try to clear for what looks to be a C hit is actually so massive. <laughs> Yeah, especially considering how many players are already in garage here. Oh, they saw Skelly. Yeah. Oof. Spike now gonna go up towards long as Skelly finds Cole and then backs up. Again, cutting him off the knees, but Kang gets the trade and they are gonna get the spike onto the site, but once again, they don't have the back of the site cleared out. That allows Skelly to push up. KXN also has another kill and Skelly's in position to get that post plant kill. Now it's a three on two. And it, you don't have any dark covers at the moment but you've got a blaze wall and you will eventually have one in the next five seconds so stig just needs to get this to halfway uh now we can just hold it beautiful play from kx i was about to sit there and say you can toggle all the different line of sight breaks that you've got right here for this post plant for york to get back on and essentially delay that offensive post plant from really finding a lockdown over through c long so really good stuff i mean it starts with skelly i mean i called it there for a moment just to interject was they saw it. I mean, you saw yeah. them off the corner unless their eyes were going somewhere different because obviously they don't have the luxury of the extra like we do. But you should have known that Skelly was playing C window. That's the kill that you should probably be trying to isolate or at least delaying the hit until you know that he's backed up completely. But not the case. Skelly finds first blood, and that was a huge difference maker for allowing him to get all of his utility on the site for him to find a second. Well, you're absolutely on point there. Now, Cole with uh, a, a recon dart that I think was on the outside of A Lobby. It didn't even make it into A Lobby. So again, early utility. And this is also, again, not really doing anything. So all that silver utility just completely wasted. And now the uh, the attackers don't have to worry about that once they eventually make that push, though they do get scouted out just a little bit towards the end. Uh, yeah. Th 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 that all drone I'm more okay with because Blade is pushed forward. So okay. If you if you see any information that players are a long, you hold here because typically speaking, if you get scouted out with three players through a long with by an aldron, you're not going to continue to hit that. You're going to rotate largely through mid map right into the waiting arms of Blade, who still can tailwind away. It's a brilliant first kill coming through for Blade. That spike is still over towards A. And the defense is even actually rotated over towards B a little bit, thinking that was going to be a push. But now time has passed long enough. They realize it's not the case. Kang catches Skelly, who was also caught up by that turret. Spike's still not down yet. It's a three on five. This is looking dire for York. But Tennels does pick up one. Yeah, it's actually massive. It's a player that's up top. It's Cole. So there is no retake information coming through. So now Stig can delay a little bit longer with this blaze wall. And whoa, this rotation from Tennels, he's gonna go back over towards short. This will be a triple stack towards the left side of Paranoia comes oh, out, six for three! Oh my goodness, but Blade responds, 1v1. Both players low. Blade, earning the Blade Storm says, time for me to hit one more dart. But Tennels still has an L drone. The dash coming forward, Blade grabs four and saves the round defensively. Oh, wow. What a hero play there by Blade with two HP to their name. They maintain that lead for University of Ottawa. What an absolutely immaculate play. The Jet difference, and we got to see it again. Here's the replay. Jet diff for sure. I mean, this paranoia that comes through was so clutch to get Stig a chance, but Blade responds with two of his own. You thought everything was lost, I think, at that point. You lose three players and the fourth one's still to come. You think that lineup is a guaranteed quadra, but not the case. Blade able to get the third kill, earns the Blade Storm, finds the fourth in the 1v1 at low HP. Massive plays coming through. Recon Bolt will be good, but not going to be able to carry off any of that information for kill potential as the gravity well was a touch better. 
Wow, what a fantastic play. And then the action continues already on a long as Elicitations gets tagged just a little bit there. But nonetheless, we'll continue to hold that angle over a long. They smoked out heaven. Here comes the play. Oh, another great paranoia coming through. And Sting capitalizes again for three. Oh, my goodness. He's so good. And okay. Tippable from KXN. 11 assists. How many of those have been off paranoia, as you wonder? I'm going to guess at least eight of them. He's been so clutch with these paranoias through overtime to allow Stig to capitalize for 32 kills. Crying out loud, are you kidding me? 32 kills and still no triple double. <laughs> only, <laughs> only five assists. So that's what happens when you're top fragging, right? The assists got to go elsewhere. Yeah, what a what a play. And, and Stig, even with that spray transfer, it helps you got it that they're all paranoid. And now we have a push. There's been mostly action towards A, but we're going to get it towards C. Going to see some stars planted by Jeremy almost just in time there. The one goes down, and that's actually going to go right as the C push comes in. But the jet goes in, and Daniel <laughs> finds Jeremy like it's nothing. KXN, another good paranoia. Able to find first blood. Opportunity for York maybe to break up this defensive monotony here in overtime. Daniel wants to play close. Curveball will connect. Uh, the cage yeah. is not there in time. There are trades, but the defense coming quickly, and they're finding a lot of great kills. It comes down to one, but if you wanted one, you wanted it to be Sting. Oh my goodness, he nearly does it again, but this time winning the day is Cole, and that will keep things all defensive-sided through overtime. Oh man, neither of these teams want to give up here, and that was, wow, that was Kang getting helped out a little bit by that corner shot. Cole letting that Hunter Fury through at the end. You're right, if you want, if you want a player out there to get that the anchor last kill at Stig, but even then, Cole with the 3K at the end, showing their value, very, very massive. And and on, on both these teams have been really, really uh, solid at addressing those C-long pushes. They've been right so here. frequent in this set. And I feel like the either the, the initial defensive positions are solid or the retakes are pretty good too. Dude, this has been a battle. <laughs> yeah, and really, it's a war out here. It really is. This has been an absolute treat. Early Nova Pulse actually goes down on top of the site, expecting Denya maybe to be there with an operator. Not the case. He's holding close. Does the Aldrone see him? Yes, it does. Cloudburst able to come through. He's got to reposition and deal with this dart, able to just barely squeak away. But how about Ottawa? The discipline to back up, and they have forced out so much utility, including the paranoia from KXN. Oof, and they're going to just stomp and clomp their way over towards A. They don't care at all. And you're right. So much utility was used. KXN almost has nothing. Tennels does have a shock dart and owl drone. I'm, I'm sorry, a recon dart, actually, and does use that, but still has a shock dart ready to go. Blade and Cole get them, and now they clean up. It's a three. Oh, it, that, it just, it's over before it even starts. And now it's a three on one. This is such an impossible situation from Skelly. No utility to play with. Has to find oh. Blake cleanly. Does. 15 shots. First Nano Swarm comes out. Opportunity to find King. Not going to happen. Ottawa break up the defensive side at overtimes. 16 14. We'll see you. Map three. Wow. We are going the distance. And for grand finals, you wouldn't want anything else, right? We thought York was. I mean, after a 13 6 map pretty convincing for york but we went to haven and i i knew it once we saw a map pick an intentional map pick for haven i knew that university of auto had to have something up their sleeve that being said york university they kept it close they brought it to overtime multiple rounds but university of ottawa performing on their map as we expected as we hoped and they brought it to a map three because there's a trophy on the line there's five grand on the line second only again <laughs> yeah. 2.5 that's a, this is a 2.5k money match right here there's a lot on the line a lot on the stakes and we'd love to see it go in the distance. Man, that was such a good game of Valorant. Like, from all sides, I could not be more thrilled to see that kind of unfold here at the collegiate scene. And how about this? I'm sure someone over at CSL who's running socials is beaming right now because <laughs> brand new Instagram account. we got to fill that with content. You got enough now. Plenty of highlight clips. You're not going to want to miss any of those if you missed any of the opening matches that we saw from not just other titles, but also here from Bind. Maybe you missed some of the overtimes. Maybe before overtime, you missed it here in the Valorant scene. You want to head on over and double check all that stuff. That's CSL Esports GG on Instagram. Check out some of those top plays. Content everywhere off of that last map for sure, though. 
And after you check out the Instagram page, of course, you got to throw some love and support to HyperX and Twitch Student, our valued sponsors for the CSL Esports Collegiate season. We're repping the, the HyperX. We're repping Twitch. You know what it is. Definitely show them some love because without them, this wouldn't be possible. And then beyond that, you want giveaways? We got giveaways. HyperX is going to be giving away a Cloud Stinger wireless headset, a quadcast mic, and if there's an ad. Ally Origin 60 keyboard to one lucky CSLer who can name that boost. Fancy yourself a Rocket League fan, or maybe even a guru, because you might need to be. Mm -hmm. Head on over to the CSL Twitter at CSL Esports GG. And well, there is going to be a chance to win the grand prize bundle courtesy of HyperX if you can name that boost sound. That's incredible. I might have to just try it just because that package is insane. You got to. That being said, though, there are a lot of boosts in Rocket League. So if you, unless you know the Rick and Morty ones, I don't know. It's, it's hard. But yeah, it's definitely worth it. You got to go check it out. Shout out to them as well. And shout out to the name that boost contest. But of course, don't go anywhere because we still have one more map to go. The grand finals bout between York University and University of Ottawa is not over just yet. We have one more map to go. It is tied 1-1. Don't go anywhere. After this short break, we'll be back with some more CSL Esports Collegiate Valorant playoff action.
Welcome back, gamers, to the third and final map here of our grand finals bout between the University of Ottawa and York University. It is the culmination of our 2020-2021 CSL Collegiate Valorant season, and it comes down to this, our final map. We went to OT in map two, and now we're going overtime in the entire set. It's time for a tiebreaker. I'm here alongside Alan, a.k.a. I hold ship to call the action to bring it to you. Ship, you ready to get into this one? Because after that second map, that took a lot out of me. That was that was that was a banger. <laughs> that was a required break. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I had to just mentally reset a little bit. There were some absolute fireworks on display throughout the entirety of that second map, extending all the way to 30 total rounds. I mean, goodness gracious, that's just incredible stuff through and through. But we go to split. And this is where things are to look a little bit more interesting because compositionally, I think we're going to see a couple of tests come out as far as how good are some of the players that are on this side. Because when you look at overall, this is not traditionally a map that Jet finds terrible amount of success with, but is still brought into battle. So again, if it's really for me, it just comes down to if you're going to continue to stick on the Jet, which I imagine Denya will. Can you get the operator in his hands? On the opposite side, if you want to bring the Jet back into battle, if you're Ottawa, I feel like you kind of have to try to get that Ottawa, the, that operator as well back into the mix. But the other interesting thing is that this is the most played map and really the only played map that we see Breach on. And then we also have to consider that there is potential for a Sage. So controlling space is everything split. So I'll be interested to see how our teams do that. And you have to imagine that even with that, just to kind of talk about controlling space, that you're likely going to be seeing the Rays into the mix and probably not the Phoenix. No, definitely you're right. I'm, I'm actually curious to see if we'll see the Astra again because I don't. I feel like we don't She's see like. Man. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we don't see much Astra on split at all. But like you're 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 talking, right, right. Like you want to cut down on as many sight lines as you possibly can, especially against that operator. Astra can definitely do that. We saw some really solid combinations with the utility and other agents as well. So, this is might be the most mix up in terms of composition we might see. You mentioned the breach. I mentioned the Sage, of course, Viper, of course, it might be thrown into the mix here. Who knows? I think it really comes down to like, what's the game plan, right? Are we going to be right. really focusing on shutting down like that jet? Are we trying to create opportunities for our own operator? Are we trying to go more aggro with uh, with utility and maybe throw the breach in there? Really comes down to the game plan that these teams are trying to formulate, especially after seeing what both teams are capable of in the first two maps. And uh, we didn't talk about it, but obviously split Viper pretty synonymous yeah. kind of the peanut butter and jelly of what was initially a viper setup so we'll see if those will come through we're jumping into agent select and well we will still see denya on the jet as expected it's gonna be stig jumping away from the second duelist to play sage very sick like if you're a sentinels fan but on the other side tennels will actually be dropping away from the sova in order to play the second duelist so a little bit of a swap up when it comes down to what they want to run role wise at least for this match. And looking at the the University of Ottawa composition, it's kind of scaring me a little bit because that that comp can lock you down. All of a sudden, there's very few places and corners to hide when you have walls cutting off your team, uh, gravity wells pulling them and pushing them, you know, aftershocks opening up corners. That could be a really really hard composition to deal with on the post plant situation. Sure. That retake could be really strong. On the other hand, of course, Stig has their own wall and and are mostly sticking to the composition that's been working or not working for them so far but just with the stage, which I think is probably more than enough, but uh, I really love that University of Ottawa completely changing things up to fit the map. And it's, I think is more indicative of that, that play style, play, maybe yeah. playing a little more aggressive and looking then again, maybe for you know the retakes. You know, on the other side, I think there was a pretty big conversation once Asher was brought into the mix and Breach is kind of you know, the target of this conversation on split, like is using Breach a bit antiquated like we mm -hmm. this is a outside of the the astra like if you were to sub an omen in its place this is a composition that we saw like Anbox and envy run like stage one and even be before that uh before we even got to vct and i think the conversation at large was like is breach actually still finding value and teams like cloud nine and Anbox and nrg have all said yes you absolutely can still find value so it really just comes down to me can we find that efficiency with the utility out of coal and well, initially for Ottawa, they're moving aggressively for a tower. This would be allowed to come through, at least in part. And elicitations, they want to go down to take down Stig. That's a beautiful hit. And then the rewrap around the mid. Love this play. It's going to be all on KXN and even the fault line to deny his visibility. Oh, yeah, they're all going to stack that. Skelly actually finds Cole in that. Almost got another one. Does do so. And then Denya oh. finds it. They, they funneled themselves 
into a, a kill house right down that hallway. And what was such a fluid, attentive, uh, an, an intense attack push, they then put themselves between a rock and a hard place against the defense. And now they find themselves without the spike, low HP, and down two players. I, there's a lot that we could say about that round. We'll put a pin in it for now as we're still determining the outcome of this pistol. Denya through the dark cover, checks to the left. Headshot will eventually be there. Jeremy falls just up the blade. Full health still, but this is a difficult 1v4 to manage, especially once the spy cam reveals exactly where you are. Here come the troops. <laughs> Opening tag will be set. decent. Blade, where are you going? Gotta get the heal off. Try to reset. There will not be a hunting party. They'll just decide to play a little bit of camp over on the spike. You even see them tagging it just to make sure. Yep, Blade did not grab this. With 15 seconds to play, you just got to make a move and it likely will be unsuccessful. But just getting into the play overall, I just don't know why you go back to B or A rather. You've got a perfect flow through the middle of the map and the fault line hit top side B tower. That's a free take. And then you're rewrapping back into the defense that's rotating. And I just don't really agree with the call. Yeah, I'm not sure what the decision was behind that. I, my guess is that really just the defense was already kind of situated in like a pivot position in spawn and KXN threw some dark cover out almost immediately once that B push started to happen. And I think that might've scared them. They might've felt, oh, the defense is already ready. We shouldn't do this, but they'd already committed and they still had the advantage had they pushed it. So might've just been the wrong move. It's a lot of information for Skelly. Even the trap wire coming through Skelly for two. Denny wow. the third. Wow. Skelly wow. not going to get the fifth. But I think wow is the only word you can say. Full five man feed just between two defensive players. That was, that was, <laughs> they got their $15 a month subscription right there. That was intense. Skelly just running it down there. Not even running, just holding it down with the ghost. And now it puts them to a six. Oh, two score or kill for KD right now. I mean, just so much money to work with, right? And now they just have a bonus round. Now they're just chilling with this SMG's full armor. They got a ghost, that's it. And now they can really just play a little bit, try to do some economic damage to the attackers and then full buy next round. Yeah, and with the ghost still online for Skelly, he could technically get Denya an operator no matter what happens in the mm -hmm. next round. So that is something to kind of keep in the back of our mind. Opening wall, denied, deleted, taken care of. So no more resistance through the middle of the map, at least by way of utility. <laughs> Holding on to the paint shells, now tossing it. Will it be Tennel? Not going to connect too much with that. Denya takes the peek through the slow orb. We'll see information, but not win a gunfight. We stay 5v5. And I like that the defense didn't, like, super immediately, like, wall out mid and, like, really hold it hard because it almost gives the illusion of the attack being able to go up mid and push it. As look how long they've spent time just sitting around mid, looking for an angle, looking for something, the illusion that they can actually push this. When the defense kind of waiting for them, and Stig gets that first pick. Elicitations goes down, does get the trade off Kang, but now a 4v3 situation thanks to Denya with the attack just trying to push through mid and failing, though Jeremy will even things out. Yeah, the counter paranoia was spent to the, the mailroom push, and it kind of left KXN on a bit of an island on the B side as the secondary push was coming through main. Long range shots, Denya actually chunks the player in the back. Skelly still winning gunfights with this ghost. Do you even want the Vandal? Like, just use the ghost from here on out, you might as well. <laughs> Last two players revealed by way of Neural Theft. And a bit of confusion, it looks like, as far as where Blade and Jeremy want to play, but... Oh my goodness, Skelly. 9-0 start, are you kidding? <laughs> I, you know, I know it's uh, towards the end of the school year, but Skelly might have some some homework to do, some finals to study for. I know it's a Sunday night, it's a school night. He's out teaching here, himself so. right now. He's teaching Ottawa with all these plays. They're running a yeah, clinic cool. right here. That's some extracurricular activity for sure. <laughs> That's a 3-0 score line. Denya has the blade storm. Skelly has 6.1K credits. I mean, that... You could get us a small business loan off this guy. So <laughs> they're ready to go. Meanwhile, this is so hard for the attack, right? They have no money, no pistols. They have to win this without losing anybody, which in an, in an eco round is such a huge hard ask. Almost impossible. Especially on split two, where they're going to get cut off by this wall immediately. And there they are. Yeah, it, it, this is one of those walls that... I still don't know how I stand with this wall. Because at the end of the day you're just essentially just throwing out 300 credits. Like that's one side of the conversation. It doesn't do anything. But on the other front, it does provide some mental mind games where 
or am I on top of my wall? I could peek you aggressively. We could be stacked up on either side of this wall by the boxes. It's, there's a lot of considerations, but I just don't know if it's worth 300 credits. No. That's personal opinions aside. The play coming through. Flashpoint, well done, but the Cloudburst may be a touch better. Denya finds one, but the trade is there, and that is a weapon that very well could be collected, pending that there is still a significant push through. And Skelly, it's just... Skelly now at 10 kills already. I think has almost the entirety of the lobby's kills just under their name. And Jeremy, who has that spike, is such low HP. Not going to be able to push much at all. Tenno's holding this. Actually gets caught off guard by Cole. Is able to pick up a uh, rifle on the way up. KXN gets another with a Phantom. Has the Paranoia ready to go. Pushes back. And I think I think the Dark Cover actually uh, might have gotten over the Paranoia, that is. But Jeremy, Ooh. though, pick off right there. KXN did see it coming. Stig, though, gets it with 13 seconds left on the clock. Spike, very little time to get that down. I don't think it's possible. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, no need to peek right here if you're Skelly. He's going to hit the sound cue off the rope. Why? Elicitations. 1v2. Nearly kills himself at the end, which would have been actually kind of tragic because you could hold on to that weapon there, brother. But, oh, boy. That is not required. Skelly, oh, I got problems with that. But that's just one mistake, okay? Well, we'll leave it at that. Air, you know, air one for Skelly, but still 10 and one overall. Brilliant play from elicitations to get themselves the three kills in the 1v2 clutch to get the offense on the board. Yeah, I think they earned that error, as I suppose, at this point. Um, you yeah, and, and no no wall going up right towards... Actually, the, the wall does go up, but this, it doesn't even matter. Oh, look at that. Elicitations stopping the show with that showstopper. Gets that first kill, and not only that, completely opens up A. And like you said, that the Sage doesn't have the wall now, or does have the wall... But I'm sorry, that's bleeds. The Sage on defense doesn't have the wall now for the retake. Can't cut off the offense. That's some wasted credits right there, as you said. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's a weird conversation. But now you've got a decision to make if you're the side of York because you've got Blade Storm with the operator for Denya. Do you need to use that? Watch out for that aftershock. That was a little bit too close for comfort. Paranoia comes out through elbow, but Elicitation's holding down the trigger, finds the kill. Trade will be there. Blade Storm comes out. Then you're not going to find anything with it. So an expensive round defensively. That's a lot of weapons down. Operator, Blade Storm. And now as you take a look over the eco, they can't afford anything. So just like that, offense growing some legs and learning to run right now for Ottawa. Yeah, that was a really well-timed round win there. Being able to knock York all the way down to this, but... Also just really, you know, heads up play, right? Like they noticed that York was playing this, you know, casual, safer, non-aggressive defense. Okay, we're just gonna five stack A and push and bull rush you. And there's nothing you can do about it, especially off that showstopper. So really well played off the attack. And again, they're gonna stack A because they know where the stage is. They know where the raise is, but they don't know where Skelly is. It's Skelly gets one, almost two, but whiffs it way wide on the left. Yeah, the flash point over towards the right never actually flashed up him whatsoever, so a free kill. Stig. Oh boy, this is gonna feel bad. Oh no. Thrifty on the cards. Thrifty on the cards. Denya gets three. Oh mama, that is a massive round in response for York. And look, we've seen this a couple of different times here, Dak, where Ottawa should know they're playing up against an eco. And instead of trying to pick apart and figure out what exactly they're running into. They're just diving in. It worked okay when they were hitting through C on Haven, but when you've got shotguns in close quarters in play, you've got to be a little bit more diligent, especially if you've got a breach on your hand if you're Ottawa for that offensive round. Yeah, I mean, especially without an ult to get you onto the site, you got to know the results might be different, but it was a little bit of a gambler's, gambler's fallacy right there. Thought, oh, it worked the first time, we'll just play the same bet again. Fortunately, it didn't roll their way. Now Denya gonna avoid that uh that boom bot for just a moment and and still gets away from it, thankfully. Falls back to Rose, but so much utility used there. You can see that stage wall pushed up back away from mailbox instead of playing that mid area. And it's still denied a good amount of utility. Even though that stage wall is being used early, I, the, the attackers are continuing to throw paint shells and throw utility at it. So they're they're getting some value out of that wall by drawing some more credits out of the attack. All right, so here's the play. Offensive wall will block over through main, rolling thunder to clear top. There's the execute. Here comes the play. Is there anything to deal with this? Is there a paranoia? Anything to try to stall this play? Looks like the answer so far is no. 
But Tennels, he actually stays alive on this fight, and boy, does he finds himself two kills. KXN hugging this wall could potentially just wait for the barrier orb to expire, but he, that would mean that you're trusting a lot from Denya to make a play forward. Skelly also a part of this. Neural Depth comes through. The wall gets denied. KXN for two. Paranoia, that should be the third, but Kang responds, looking for the 1v3. Finds information off the spy cam, but there's a Neural Depth in response. Skelly's gonna stick. Denya's gonna watch his back, and the defense will hold true and strong once more. That was really solid heads up play going through that wall. I'm really surprised that the entirety of University of Ottawa were still looking up heaven despite that wall being broken and it allows guys to just walk right in, picks up two, opens up the back of the site and allows them to get that defuse. Now five rounds now for York University. They do have money. Denya at 7.1K. So regardless of how this round goes, they can buy an op for the next one, which is certainly what they're going to be building towards. But look, they're still full rifled. It's going to be yeah. a, 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 you know, an eco round here for University of Ottawa. But how much can they really get done in the next rounds if they don't deny the op here? This is that aggressive peak from Stig. Does the same these are these mind games that come through. Sit there and say, ah, is this going to throw this wall down? No problem, we'll just delete it. And then one round, he tries to dry peek it, and it's in a really appropriate time to do that as well in an eco. So now the mental chest becomes 3D from 2D with that wall. 4v5 situation, and I just don't know what you do here if you're Ottawa. You have to find an opening somewhere, but without elicitations, that's your big kill potential by way of utility. You just have to hit some shots. And, and problem is, is... They've essentially earned nothing. I mean, sure, they could get the the res off, but that wall just goes down, so they can't cover it. And it'll it'll be a res that they could get, but it, on, an, on an eco round, it's not even worth it. So they're likely just going to save it. They have no other utility to use and have gained no territory whatsoever on this push. Yeah. There's no reason for the defense to push either. They're just holding mailbox. I don't know what they do here. Got to hope for an opening. Not going to be against Denya. Not either going to be against KXN either. 30 and seconds even left. the mark here that the breach has been spotted over towards B main. Flashpoint execute KXN. Will give up some space. Paranoia. It hits. Oh my goodness, it hits. One Finds one more. Knows that blade is stuck in a rude spot. Goes to the classic. Even gets a little bit of heal. Tendles will take it away. That'll be 6 2 flawless round. And it all goes back to that thrifty in round four. Mm -hmm. Oh. You would have loved to have had that one if you were Ottawa. Absolutely. And then, of course, losing Elicitation so early in that round. Really, really big difference maker. Coming into this one, though, Elicitation should be able to get the Showstopper during the round. So they could use it mid-round. They could save it for the next one to try and go for one of those you know, aggressive A pushes. Jeremy will also have Cosmic Divide soon. So those are ultimates that they might start to look using down the road. Maybe not necessarily this round if they get them. But at the same time... You know, they don't have uh, any other ults. They can't use the breach to get onto site very reliably either. You can see Denia holding on the left side. So this is these slow pushes. They're very much relying on just like peaks and trying to get an initial pick and not necessarily off utility. Wait, that's a great slow orb. I was gonna say Tennels might be able to use this, but Elicitation avoids it. Turns it into two kills. Now moving quickly, looking for Denya. Over the top, just barely misses it, but not enough safety inside of the cloud. That will be three straight kills, and the offense has made their way very swiftly on to B. Next point of contest, Elicitations lines up two. And load of paint shells just to put a punch on top of it. Big round for the offense of Ottawa. When it works, it works. I mean, all they need is Elicitations to just go in and start firing at people, and I guess that's enough. Got those kills, needed just one for the Showstopper. The Showstopper whiffed, but... Pretty much, the, the, you want to make sure you're getting the round, right? Like at this point, you can't like lose rounds you're meant to win. So you got to start popping, popping ultimates. That being said, the showstopper didn't do anything. So they got to wait for that to come back. Blade's still holding onto this res. I believe Blade's been holding onto this res for several rounds now, but hasn't had a good opportunity to use it. Yeah, that's the key. There really hasn't been a good round for him to use it yet. One was in an eco. That last yeah. round, not really required. Opening shot from Denya, not going to connect. Oh, goodness, that gravity well and that boombox combination was nearly a free kill. But everything goes back to neutral. 5v5, plenty of time on the clock to make something happen. Look, Absolutely. That spike is still not moved, though. It will be picked up here by elicitations. They rotate over towards B. And 
You can see the, the dark cover going out from the defense. So they might be anticipating a push towards A, but it's not coming their way as everyone's starting to stack towards the B garage area. The way the wall has gone down, so they do have to funnel a bit through a slightly smaller corridor, but it's yeah, that the noise though. Now they definitely know that they're there with the ultimate orb. That's gonna call the slow orb to come out. And they're gonna try to push off this, but yeah, I, I don't know why they gave themselves away, and Denya gets a free kill. He gets two free kills. Showstopper went down, but was not even required. So now this Cosmic Divide has done nothing as the defense is already through it. Still have to kind of push your way forward. Kills are decent. We go to a 2v3 situation. Oh, but Denya up close. Oh, that looked like a bit of no scope. Oh my God, Denya, what? That was immaculate. Uh, you're definitely right on that one. That was a no scope gut punch right there. And there's the replay just to get another angle on it. There's one from Denya. Cosmic Divide doesn't even matter. Guess the second one. I want to know if it's a no scope or not, but I don't think we will see it. I, I think we got the bare end of it right there, but that was all Denya all day. But it goes back to that initial push from Garage. Why give away your position? Why tap the alt orb? Why tell them, oh, hey, we're right here. Throw a slow orb at us, snipe at us. Why would you do that? And yeah, to be fair, you mentioned that dark cover. I mean, there was a lot of clearance that came through defensively through True. a ramp. So you did know that there's likely going to be a hit over through B main. So they stacked and, but yeah, the ult orb definitely gave it away, especially for an orb that didn't give you anything. Res will come through. I was about to say, this should be a pretty negligible first blood from Denya because this is a very safe res that comes into play. But offensively, Ottawa getting a bit of cold feet once more. You're already seeing the Astro of Jeremy rotating all the way back around. But lurking is king, and he's going to have to do something. It's the Cypher. It's in the top side by A-Ramps. Look how walled this off. I mean, this is... They have to go to B now because the entirety of the map is completely cut off from them. You see the defense, though, has to worry about Kang, who has made their way over towards heaven, has that camera up and gets that information, knows exactly where the op is. Probably didn't even need the camera to get that information. But that being <sighs> said, they know where the op is. Ottawa's missing a timing here. Oh, that is great from Kang to keep the defense planted. Now you're going to be able to use the clearance of the full rolling thunder, but Stig still finds two. And now the defense is here. Ah, the timing was just not great. You could have just ran onto the B site, used that rolling thunder to deny the retake, but it comes down to just Kang being a 1v2. Skelly playing one angle, Denya the other. Thanks for peeking. Oh, and actually misses it. Blade Storm just because, why not? Yeah. Yeah, that was, I think, all timing right there. Missed the timing and pushed towards B. The 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 rolling thunder was like almost kind of late or I mean, a little too early. Like the defense wasn't even in position to like get hit by it, right? They were still rotating over. And so the utility essentially whiffs. Defense comes in, they pick off that breach and some easy picks come in afterward because the utility has already been burned. So eight to three going into this last round here. Uh, this is this is not the scene that we saw in the, on Haven. A little bit of a struggle here for the University of Auditor squad. Maybe they're running out of gas. Maybe they just I mean, they, <laughs> they reached the endurance level. I'm not sure, but York University looking strong. And there's another one from Denya to kick things I mean, off. You've you've got three flashes on the breach. You gotta use one. Elicitations oh, trying to work on in. Oh no! Aftershock not gonna connect. <laughs> Just barely Shroud steps away. Denya brought back to life. Not that he's needed. He already did his job. 9-3 the half. York in a convincing spot after the defense. But like I was about to say, the defense of this map, unless you are Envy, <laughs> is the favorite side for just about everybody. Absolutely. I mean, sure, over time, this, this map has become a bit less polarizing than it was the beginning of Valorant a year later or a year earlier. I remember original split, vanilla split. That's almost a completely different map now. But yeah, it's still definitely yeah. a slightly, you know, uh, decided map, especially just mentally. Teams are more comfortable there, too. But now I really want to see how this jet works out for Denia, right? Like you can't just sit back on those really far angles, either mid or at screens. You're going to have to create these angles for yourself where you know Denia is eventually going to, you know, buy an operator at playing jet. So really interesting to see how that works out. What is in store for this pistol? It looks to be all aggression to A. And Tennel's going over the top of the cyber cage. We'll actually <laughs> make sure that the left side is clear. 
sound cues galore. Tennel's coming back to the fight, will help take care of Jeremy. So it's a one for one exchange. Beautiful paint shells over the top. Actually does a significant amount of damage. And even beyond that also, you've got right clicks galore from elicitations. And the Boombot also found some value. So a good defensive hold pistol wise for Ottawa. Well, there's the obvious value of raise. You have a site that has a lot of close quarter situations. You have an Asian that throws down a ton of AOE damage. Those two to go together like peanut butter and jelly. It's a really solid play. Uh, yeah, that comes down to a pistol that they very desperately needed. Um, and also, I don't know if you saw it. There was that. I don't know if you remember that that texture glitch that happens when you go through cages. I, you could see the uh, the cipher appear inside the cage's texture. That was really weird. I caught that though. I wonder if they saw it in the replay. But yeah, I thought that bug was fixed. That being said, nine to four scoreline, a very necessary round for University of Ottawa. But can they push on forward? Oh, Denny just wants to go aggro. Wait, they should know there's a player in the corner. Oh. No, not apparently. Judge comes into motion for two. Kang finds the third. KX10 essentially trying to force a square peg into a round hole, not going to find anything through B main. So a pretty negligible pistol and anti-eco from the side of Europe, but for Ottawa, that is clean both rounds. So you can build up a bank, and then beyond that, you can still find a lot of value with the double judge three spectral loadout, which is what they're going to have coming into this next round. Absolutely, and this has been working out really solid for them. They're they're they've got those aggressive positions with the shotgun, and then they can still stay mobile and fluid with those SMGs and really reposition if they need to. But it's still it's still a very very tall mountain to climb. But they can do it if they can start to get that snowball momentum going, and also. If they can try to get these ultimates out soon, elicitations on their way to another showstopper pretty quickly. First blood is going to determine a lot here. And I love this wall, especially if you're going to be playing with judges. It'll just essentially give you mm -hmm. a free line of fire. So defensive wall placed early is fully fortified. And if you're really looking from York's POV, you read the wall, you don't shoot it, you just wait for it to dissipate. And then you make your offensive execution happen, especially if you're focusing on B. There's really no need to try to deter it at the moment. Here. Boombot will clear over through vents. Nothing's going to be seen off that. And so Daniel will take the space. They're going to move right in through ropes over towards this A Heaven area that's being held somewhat by Kang's camera, but they're not going to see them come out of ropes until they start to actually go deeper into Heaven. That was also it's a big, yeah, big wall. Yeah, they're going to be able to boot up towards fake. B main here. It's all fake. They don't. That's yeah, all, all it is. Fake. Yeah. So it's going to be this play up through A. Defense has rotated. Denya going to cut it off. Oh my goodness, this is perfect. Spike now going to be planted. KX10, the one to do it. It is a 5v4 situation. Everyone has to go through Denya and Tennels. But the retake off the flashpoint for A Heaven, looking pretty solid for now. Jeremy's also snuck into elbow. If you could find this kill in the KX, it would be massive. Now it's a requirement, but it's only a judge. Not going to find it. Elicitations has grabbed two, sure, but no chance to get through Skelly. And again, typical from Stig to put down that fake wall towards B to move the defense. Yeah, that was nice. I love that. And you can just tell now they're setting the pace. They are really, really moving and grooving right now. Denya now over that 20k kill limit right there. Not even a limit. Not a limit for this man. Absolutely not. Ten. A tw wow. Ten to five score line, and it's looking good for the for the offense here. Is they able to full buy, get all these rifles? No operator, but uh, they'll have to at least win a couple more rounds cleanly. But at that point, the match might even be over. So with this full buy here, Cole only one, not a full armor. Blade doesn't even have a rifle. So the attack's going to have to play for some picks, try to draw some utility out here, but otherwise play slow. All right. What is going to be the setup here defensively? Have to find success this round. Cannot go down 5-11. No Boom bots just to exchange intel mid-map. Actually, the offensive one just a bit wide. Doesn't actually fully oh, connect into vents. The cloud burst will go down. Blade has held onto the wall for now, but will spend it. Denya does not want to allow it to take up any space. They delete it pretty quickly. Oh, yep. They already know that Stig's going to be pushing towards B main as well, but Stig looking for another wall here. Not necessarily a fake because the spike is going towards their uh, that garage area, but it does bait out some utility from the breach, which is crucial. They want to get rid of and drain as much breach utility as they can before they actually push up onto the site. Well, it's going to be able to play a spot in a corner, but this is one of those that you have to essentially go one for left. one. 
There's no ability for a trade, at least not immediately. You do have one up top. Here comes the play. There's the first. Does he get a second? No, oh, not the case. Showstopper! Dang. Nail in the coffin. Beautiful rotation off the double blast pack from Elicitations. That will be enough to get their sixth round up and a required round win, as we mentioned. Definitely. And Cole getting that first kill without the, what the, there was no double peak there. If there was a double peak, might've been enough time to get the kill and push past the wall without getting hit by the showstopper, but there's no double peak. They get the one kill and that was enough to buy some more time for the raise to the get there to get place. that well-placed showstopper. That was huge. University of Ottawa, Ottawa staying alive as barely as they can, but they do have the majority of the rounds in the second half. And you've been able to put York onto an eco now, so this should be another round that you take. And 710 does not feel all that bad. Cole's spam decent, but not good enough. The healing orb will be spent to try to get Denya back to fightable health. KXN trying to see what his vertical reach looks like. Not good enough to get on top of the box. So they go to work to carve out some ice sculptures mid map. And that will essentially delay as the slow orb will make sure nothing comes through mid. And again, that rotation towards B is Denius holding this. Pop that blade storm with no armor and 70 HP, trying to make the most out of this round here. And he's scouting out a little bit, giving some information to the team here of where the team is set up. Defense, that is. Again, missed utility. Denius still holding strong on this left side. No one pushing in, but you know, Elicitation is waiting in heaven here. Actually swings wide at the worst time. The timing's not there. And now that's two kills from Cole. Elicitation though gets it. Cole picking up the slack. Blade gets one, and the defense holding in. No answers here for, you know, for York University. Is Stig the last one to go down? Yeah, great stuff there from Cole to grab two before the cloud burst allowed the chance for Denny to move from behind. If Denny finds that kill a bit sooner, totally different look for that round, but the cloud burst wasn't perfectly placed. You want to try to use that to block off that left corner. I mean, you saw what he was trying to do. Throw it to the back left, dash in, look right, but the problem was there was just enough of an envelopment to allow Cole to look over the top of the cloud burst and find a couple of the kills because of it. So a little bit tough on the placement, but that's larger what cost around. Good stuff, though, from Cole overall. 12, 13, and 12. Having a great game through and through. You want that triple-double. Well, it's on the board now all of a sudden. So get your Ice Cube references already for that. <laughs> it's been a good day for him here on Split. Oh, Denya, I was going to say, this is a risky round here for the attackers because they force bought here. They have no credits. Denya, zero credits and half armor to get that up, but it pays off at least so far as they get that first pick on the Kang. The defense is still split between the two sites, and KXN teleporting themselves back towards screens. That's a ton of information, and they don't know that half the team is on the other side, but they do know that that back screen area is open. And they're going to be able to smoke that out and start to push up onto the site. Yeah, it's just the single operator kill doesn't really tell you a lot. Rolling Thunder timing is decent, but Jeremy's only able to find one kill. Tentals over the top, lots of damage, finishes off the kill with the Phantom. 2v4, here's the Blast Pack, and the Neural Theft will reveal that both players are on the rotation. The Stations is able to get into screens, though. Blindly throwing out one, the Page Shell. Now, onto the site. Good movement to get on through. Finds the first kill, but the problem is it's to be a 1v3. And Denya's holding one angle, throwing shoulders kicks into the other. Finds oh. the kill pretty cleanly, swaps the weapon, fresh mag, but Tennels from behind. Gets the angle, gets the timing, and puts York up 11 to 7. That might have been the game deciding round right there. I mean, if there was one round that the University of Ottawa had to win, it was there when York University was on the force buy. Now that they survived it, York can buy right back in, get some armor, get some rifles in their hands. Even Denya helping out with some extra credits right there. And now only two rounds away, the attackers are looking really good here. University of York, they've got rifles, they got buys, but the defense pretty solidly evenly kitted us aside from the op, but Denya has shown that they have no problem making opportunities, creating opportunities on offense with this operator. Yeah, I, this the, you would have loved to have had that last round for sure, but this, this round is the game uh, coming through at the moment. You do have some economies to still work with after this for a pretty decent force buy if you lose this if you're Ottawa, but you win this round, you also put some at least economical decisions into the minds of the York players because they're still not fully healthy with their eco still, even after the round win. So this one, a pivotal one to be sure. Denya hoping that he's going to get a, some sort of information from Cole. 
He's wiser than that, though. Not going to allow a chance. And while well, the spike the entire time has just been holding in mid-market, and honestly speaking, you're not really getting a lot of motion from Skelly either. He's playing A ramps, but very slowly. Yeah, definitely. And he's trying to collect whatever information. I'm not sure if they've seen Jeremy already. You also have Kang, who's on the camera waiting there, too. So there's a solid amount of eyes on Skelly if need be. Meanwhile, the spike is making its way up through mid, potentially towards ropes, but they are not committing just yet because Skelly really hasn't gotten that much information. They don't know where anybody is on A. 30 seconds left. They're going to rotate. This is going to be an A play. Oh, they see one across. Temples is going to go quickly here. He's trying to jump on, finds the first blood. Careful, Massive. Bro. And the trap wire is actually was so low, it didn't actually catch tunnels at all. Retake quick to come through the cyber cage. Kang be the first one forward. Trying to come out. Blast pack finds so much value. And Stig turns it into a double. One more in the corner. Tunnels there for the kill. And it comes down to one. Just Cole tries to flash forward, but it misses tunnels completely. So three kills for the Rays. And now match point. Grand finals championship point in play in favor of York. That was that was gangster for Tennels right there. Throwing out the blast pack and just looking away. Just turns to the right. Nah, it's all good. I'll let Stig get the kills. I don't even need to do it. That was hype. And that's exactly what he was doing. You were right. That that was probably the game right there. 12 to 7. Fully bought now for the York University squad and defense that is at half strength, if that. University of Ottawa needs a miracle to hold on here against this York University squad to hang on and keep their championship hopes alive. It, the force by situation is not terrible, but you're gonna have to have a special play in elicitations is gonna do that. Aftershock to flush out one. Tennels does find one before dropping, but the defense does carry numbers, 4v3 situation and Honestly speaking, for the offense of York, you have to re-clear mid with those engagements. There was nobody there to find trades. They could be anywhere in the middle of the map. That's bold. Oh, and no punish. Oh no, Del Cole and Kang do get in right in there and punish them. All right, so as expected, that's very, very risky res and you see why. And that spike is now gonna slowly mosey its way over towards A. Let's see if they can salvage this round but it's it's a huge ask here. No blade storm. Denya does have the op, but gonna really need to get this initial kill and then set up on the site before the defense rotates over. Yeah, I, I just I think Stig had a wall. I don't know how you don't wall that res. Yeah, <laughs> it's just weird. Fault line comes through defensively. Retake on the way. Jeremy still playing in the back of site. Skelly waiting for the timing, but the shoulder was just peeking out a bit too much. So four members survive. Hey, all of a sudden, this has become extra life in the lungs of Ottawa. They can hold on to those ARs. Someone can purchase for elicitations. And still, I mean, yeah, there's some money to be spent over on York, but you're in fighting condition with essentially full buys here if you're Ottawa. This is still doable to take to it overtime. Oh, I was almost thinking York did KXN did have the money to buy Denya another op, but they decide against it to play a safer full rifle armor build here. And at this point, I think they definitely realized they just want to get this over with. They don't want to let University of Ottawa get back into this game as they are letting them get back in here a little bit. But it's still match point, tournament point, set point, championship point here for the attackers. Can York University put University of Ottawa away? A lot of alts to also consider defensively here from the side of Ottawa, including a resurrection. This is one of those rounds that even an eco res at the end of the round would be fine. Gravity well, slow or paint shell, so much value. Elicitation gets one. Showstopper offensively. What in the world was that? <laughs> Both players going airborne for a little bit of rocketry, but it still turns out fully defensively. Elicitation earns back the paint shells, finds it onto KXN. And that is a masterclass defense from the Ottawa Rays. Elicitations, I space jammed right there, dunked from mid court. What I don't even, I can't even explain what happened in that, that fight over towards the shack on B site. But since then, things have absolutely simmered down. And how could they not? Skelly just trying to stay alive with the Phantom intact have and their it. full armor. You have to you have to save it here. I mean, look at the money. Denya has 300 credits. Tennels, 600 credits. KXN and Stig are lucky to have four digits. To come into these next rounds, that this is the momentum that University of Auto absolutely needed. They needed to get these rounds wins. Those, that forced buy was, was uh, 
that, if, if they didn't do that, then it would be over. So, oh, you know, so exactly. now that we're in this situation, they've bought themselves some more time here. If they can just keep York University on their heels, keep them on the ropes for these next few rounds, this is doable. Very doable from the defensive side. And you only spent one ult there. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of tools still in the shed. Including yeah. the rest. That's the big thing. I mean, Stig is, he's not going to get a rest before overtime comes through, most likely. I mean, two out of seven, maybe there's a chance to grab it before you start to get to round 24. But, I mean, if he starts to find kills to earn that, oh, he's, he's, I mean, they just win, right? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much how it goes. Yeah. It would have to be a really interesting setup. So, now as we get to a spot where it's 12-9. You take a look over the economy of York. Not great. Half buy situation. Just a couple of hero ARs. Yeah, this is essentially around them, assuming they know they're going to lose. But it's really all about that economic damage. How much money can they take away from the defense here? I'm going to try to go for that mid push. Solicitations, though. So top fragger in the entire lobby. and They're going right towards him. He's going off this game. Danya moves forward. Gravity well. No paint shells this time. Not going to need it because the oh, elicitations uses it to line mid. things up from behind. Now the bank shot through mid. That's going to put some pressure on to Stig. And as Jeremy puts a crossfire into play, it's just down to Stig. And they know exactly where he's at. Stuck in a corner. Another flawless round comes through. Oh boy. Hold on to your horses, friends. We could be in for another barn burner. University of Ottawa, not done just yet. All they lost that round was full armor for Cole. That's it. No bodies, didn't lose any guns, nothing. That's exactly what you need. And they, and as long as they have elicitations just in the right place at the right time, this is this is a, almost a one game for University of Ottawa. If elicitations is where the push is happening, it's almost a done deal right there. But they, you know, how long are they going to get those reads every single round? Right? You got to be right every round and. There's not a large margin of error here for University of Ottawa. Cosmic Divide has also been earned in that prior round. So this is going to be interesting as far as what do you use to execute here against the face of that potential Cosmic Divide. Elicitation, same spot. Push back just a touch, but you'll be all right. Similar smoke. These are a copy-paste round so far, but this time the difference is Denya is actually the lurker. Offensively, York is all about playing for A, and it comes down to really what does Kang find after the cyber cage fades away? Nothing! Tettles finds the kill, and now the defense has to scramble to rotate, and Cole has to be gigantic defensively, oh, no. and he will not be minuscule in effort just down to a 5v3 resurrections here well but i don't know if you're gonna have time to use this last couple of players making their way on spikes down 12 10 but could it be 13 10 jeremy last player alive gets one but denya puts him down for the count makes it 13 10 and makes it a two to one set to take the victory york university are your csl collegiate valor champions of the 2020 2021 season and after an amazing set wow no other words other than they absolutely deserve it that was an absolutely electric series. By far some of the most fun I've had covering Valorant so far. We were treated to an incredible grand finals through and through. Absolutely love it. Massive congratulations out to York for being the CSL champs. Like you mentioned, commiserations to Ottawa, but boy, did they put up a heck of a fight today. They really did. You know, after that first map, York University was looking so good. They looked good on paper. They looked good in map one, 13-6 scoreline. And then we go into Haven and we really didn't know what to expect, right? We knew it was the team's map pick, but Haven's such a volatile map to go either way. And it almost did, went to overtime, and it could have very likely been the York victory, but Ottawa just, it was 2-1 in winner's finals. I'm not surprised that it was 2-1 in grands. University of Ottawa, they, I mean, they really should be happy with how well they played. Absolutely. Through losers against the strongest teams that you could find in college Valorant. And they made them, they, they worked for their money, right? Like they made them play their hearts out. So really, really good job to both these two teams. I'm honestly blessed to have been here for the cast. So I'm, I'm happy that we saw this because it was awesome. Yeah. 2500 still earned for Ottawa, but the five, Grand take and that trophy, York lines and that trophy. I think it's slick, trophy. man. Telling yes. you, telling you, telling you, absolutely. Uh, 
but I mean, there's just so many highlights from this match overall. I don't even know how the replay ops have figured out which ones they want to look <laughs> at because there are just so many cool moments from both sides of the table. This opening play, though, I still I, I'm going to have to go back and rewatch to see what exactly was the play call there for Ottawa because they had the opening to go through ropes, through mail, and have a free B site, but they decided to track back and. It cost them the opening pistol, which is really tough. And then you also, I think it was in round five, round six, you had that thrifty round that came through that also was going to wreak havoc on your mental because that was a round that it looked really good for Ottawa going into it. Still come up just a bit short. Yeah, definitely. And there's, we were seeing a bunch of these uh, awesome B plays here. Denny, of course, there was a 4K on this. Just before this, we saw that that B wall fake that was awesome. Denya, I mean, how many Denya clips are we going to get right here? No surprise. Uh, the uh, the aggro push, elicitations right there. That was the gangster no look. Love that. That was awesome. Uh, the highlights for both of these two teams. Elicitations. Even though they were on the losing team right now, I almost feel like they could have been like the MVP of the set. They were just a showstopper living up to that old name. I don't even know what that was, <laughs> but it was something. Yeah, I, I, have, I don't have words uh, deep enough in my vocabulary to frame up what exactly that little showstopper v. showstopper moment was. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, elicitations played lights out. Uh, Denya, I mean, if you don't know who Denya is, I mean, pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's that to also take away. Uh, yeah, largely just great stuff all the way across the board. But again, it is the York Lions ruling the day at the end. Big GGs all the way through, which I believe GGs is actually the nickname of the University of Ottawa, if I'm not mistaken, which uh, there's a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> not the case. Uh, but hey, Dak, that's that's our first time casting Valorant together. I had a blast, man. I had a lot of fun with you tonight. Over too soon, my guy. I hope we get to do it again <laughs> soon. I would have loved this to have been a first to 10. I would have kept doing it all through Monday, <laughs> man. It would have been a great. Both these two teams put on an absolute a spectacle. Really great play between York University and Ottawa. And for us, we're really glad for you all to join us. But it's not over just yet because we're going to throw it over to Katie to give an interview with Skelly and the rest of the squad there. But that interview is coming in just a little bit. We're getting those teams to, to, together there. But I'm sure I'm sure they're like figuring out like how they're feeling, right? Like York University is probably like still getting hey. over the win, not even worried about talking about it, right? They're just feeling it. I'm sure. Ch I mean, championships across... All, like all day today, like there's mm -hmm. so many cool moments you have to feel like. And I still am just floored over the sheer number of teams that even participated in this in the first place. That heightens the experience you have to feel so much because, you know, coming from a different background in collegiate esports, we saw just kind of favorites run through the season. That was not the case here. I mean, even through the group stage, Jork would face the defeat. They've been tested throughout the entirety of the playoff bracket. So to come out on top of a 146 team pool, and be tested the entire way through, including this grand finals, where you don't have yep. that safety at a bracket reset. Yeah, that's going to feel absolutely incredible for these guys. Could not be happier for them um, all the way across the board. And with all those things, it obviously pains. I think the auto players just a touch more. Like, you're so close to pulling everything back and getting that split to an overtime. So many just small things. But um, beyond just that kind of gravity of, of what we just went through, you know, 10 weeks of regular season and then the playoff bracket, you also got to keep in mind that these guys are playing some really awesome Valorant. Like, yeah. I was a little bit floored by just how good some of the combinations were. So the time that went into these teams, getting this well rehearsed is definitely something of note. Absolutely. And and that's they're doing all this while being full time students. Full time right? students, exactly. Like, yeah. like, this is not easy to to do the college life and, and have like a social life or not, but then also do the esports grind. It's I, you know, it's very, very difficult. So props to every team not even just these two every team that made it this far into every the playoffs team, sure. and especially this region the canada east region the tower top three teams in the playoffs came from the same canada east conference that that's wild to me like that is a breeding ground clearly for some top players if you're out there like trying to put teams there trying to look for players like clearly this is where you got to be looking there's so much talent just i like condensed into one area, it's it's absolutely mind blowing. I would not be surprised to see more of these players, not only in future CSL and, and collegiate matches, but even beyond that. Yeah, really awesome stuff all the way through. Uh, but we are ready to go. Throw things back over to World's Bedford. She is the World's Bedford. I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> and then she's going to be joined with Skelly. But for myself, for Dak, man, we had a lot of fun. Hope you guys all enjoyed the show, and hopefully we'll see you guys next time. But for now, over to Katie with the interview with Skelly. Shift, Dak, thank you so much. And guys, 
That'll do it, York. Well, I got a little nervous for him at the beginning because we know what seems to happen with these teams when they win the first map. They lost the second, but they were able to regain and come out on top 2-1. Congratulations to York University on their Valorant win, the final grand finals win for CSL this weekend. I'm super excited now to bring in Skelly from York University to talk to me a little bit about everything that happened. First and foremost, Kelly, congratulations on the win. And I want to get right into it. Talk to me about map two. So map one, it seemed like you guys were pretty comfortable in your win. Map two goes to 1614. It's overtime. It seemed crazy. What happened there for you guys? What went wrong? Uh, honestly, it's just the way Haven is with three bomb sites. They're able to get the bomb down so easily. Uh, and then they just were just dumping utils, so we had no chance in ever retaking. So we had to make the decision of like just making sure we got early info and then basically just stacking a site and making sure that we either hold the site or we all die. Like we're not playing post plants because there's just zero chance we're going to be able to win them. So you could notice a lot of time in the minimap we're just like stacking A or stacking C because we mm -hmm. get early info of where they are and just try and hold it down. And there was a couple moments there where it ended up in these 1v1 scenarios. And I know that everyone, especially I was watching chat, was kind of holding their breath in those moments. So you win map one, it goes the distance map two, and you don't win. So what happens with the team heading into your preparation for map three? What were you guys talking about? What, what was it like behind the scenes? Uh, we're just trying to keep spirits up. You know, we all knew that like we should have won that map and it was just like just little things that were screwing us over. I mean, it tells that one big round that he felt so bad about it. And, like, <laughs> yeah, we all knew it was a major screw up, but we just got to move on, you know? So yeah, we just clear head and we, we beat these guys on split before. So we knew we could be, do it again. And that's, I think, something that we've seen routinely through a lot of the teams, Skelly, that have won over CSL today and yesterday was kind of exactly what you said. Even if you lose that map, you guys had the mentality to kind of brush it off and keep on moving. So what, is, what does the win mean to you? What does the win mean to the team? You get to close out the day and, and take home that trophy and some nice cash, too. Yeah, it means a lot because I mean, it's my last school year. Uh, for my very first semester in, like, uh, the end of 2015, I've been playing collegiate esports, so it's nice to end on a high note. Uh, me and Tunnels are three time champions now, and, and then Danya yeah, and KXN are two times, and Stig's got his first ring right there. So, yeah, I got, I even got the ring from 2019 right there, and I've got a broken trophy here. Oh, uh, no, it's broken. Yeah, yeah it died in a car accident, but I've, I've, been meaning it to, oh my goodness. I've been meaning to glue it together for like the past three years, but yeah, now I got another trophy to add, so. Uh, maybe if the esports <laughs> club ever gets a permanent room, I'll donate it to them. But for now, I think I'll be holding on to them. Well, maybe we'll get some glue to get that fixed up for you so that you could have your nice collection. But Skelly, that, that is quite a storied history for you then in, in CSL and so far in these tournaments. So congratulations again once to you for ending your senior year with a win. Certainly deserved considering how you guys played throughout CSL and congratulations to York University and the rest of your teammates. And congratulations, I'd also like to say to all of the casters, production, staff, everyone behind the scenes that you haven't seen who's been kicking butt this entire weekend to make the CSL 2020-2021 Grand Finals hosted by Esports at LSU a possibility. And one more time, guys, you know I'm going to do it. I'm going to tell you to head on over to Instagram at the CSL Esports GG Instagram. Go give them a like. Go give them a follow. So all the highlights, the great plays that you saw from this weekend, you can relive them on their Instagram, as well as our hosts, HyperX and Twitch student. They've been here from the beginning, and they are here at the end. Thank you to them for being valued sponsors. As well as, guys, remember, there is still a giveaway going on throughout this weekend. Name that boost. Please head over to CSL Esports GG, their Twitter, for your chance to win in the Name That Boost Rocket League giveaway competition. Best of luck to everyone who enters that. And that'll do it, guys. We had two incredible days from starting with League of Legends and going through the first of today with Rocket League and ending on Valorant. We've seen some incredible series, series that went the distance and some dominant sweeps. We pretty much saw everything you could ever ask for. And well, that's a great note to end it on. So from myself and everyone else, thank you so much. All the viewers who stuck around for CSL. We look forward to seeing you next year. We'll see you then.